Ah, oh. <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah, I just... I didn't look at what you were doing. It was a whole thing. <laughs> oh, there it was. Ah. Ah. <laughs> so I could cry of pain. Hello, everyone. Hi. Welcome to our pro you. Clap, 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 clap. Clap. Ah. Mm. Oh, it's good. Oh, it's so tart. Yeah, we're not actually having pro you because we're bad people. We're having sorbet. I mean, because we're good people. Pretty people. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Sorbet! Woo! What's a fro -yo? One, frozen dessert made out of frozen yogurt. Two, a retrospective picked up, a uh, name picked up by Aragorn, um, where you eat frozen desserts and talk about the campaign. Woo! All the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the... Terrible. Aragorn told us about this, like, eight years ago. Mm -hmm. I was like, don't name a number, don't do it! Don't do it! <laughs> but... At the end of Exalt Witch Nexus. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, and man. we've done it for every campaign. Yeah! Which is lovely. Fantastic tradition. Hi, everyone. <laughs> oh, no. Randy, no. It's been ages. Where's my chat? She's got a blow, Captain. Firebot, not open. It's a punch, baby. Do, 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 oh, yeah, because old punching. bot launched. Oh, it's because I launched it from my copy, which must, must be an old copy of the mm, launch apps right. button. I've launched it. That's yeah. also why the windows didn't all move to where they're supposed to be. Explodes in front of you, eh? Like a full on. Boom. I just wanted to be able to see that. No, no, it's a Stop. secret to everyone. It's a secret to everybody. There we go. It's populating. It's I, populating. So, folks, the 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 deal is um, today we are celebrating the campaign that we finished. We're going to take your questions from the audience, questions from each other, mm -hmm. um, and overall just enjoy the fact that we spent a good portion of our time playing this game right here. Hey! Yay! Us. Okay. And uh, we'll, we'll give our thoughts on the way that we felt the game went, the way that we felt the, the game's mechanics felt, the, the story of the whole thing. Uh, might play a game or two later on. Like, cool. Not like a role-playing game, but like a dating game uh and game. and honestly the the thing that i like the most about this is that uh it gives us a chance to also be honest with each other which is kind of the important part of a retrospective right well during a campaign um i won't answer certain questions because mm. i don't want to spoil a ccc right and, and so yeah. now i can kind of be like ah I always reserve the right to hold things in reserve, right? Like there's some, and I promise you that I'm holding something in reserve. I'm not doing it because I'm like, uh, I, I don't actually have a good answer for that. Uh, That's not <laughs> lost. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, no. yeah, this isn't a fucking mystery box. <laughs> uh, it's that sometimes if I have a particularly good idea, then I'll hold on to it. If I have a, if I think we might come back to a campaign, I might hold on to something. Mm. Uh, it's why a whole bunch of things from Changeling, for instance, or from Exalted, I haven't necessarily revealed. Uh, huh. So, uh, you can see us so clearly. I'm so glad, Ellie Spot. All uh, the points. So it's it's really just an, an occasion <laughs> for us also to be honest with ourselves about things that we didn't like, because otherwise, yeah. how else are we going to learn and grow and change and, and grow and change and shit? So if you have questions, uh, and we haven't taken them from Discord, Discord, all the questions are preloaded for us. We'll be able to call them up. But if you have questions today. Use an exclamation mark Q and then a space and then type whatever you want and it'll automatically go into our queue system so that we'll be able to do. <laughs> what was that cool thing Kaylee discovered in the Umbra? Can't tell you. I think it's a big box. I can't tell you that one. A big box. Of, God, no. <laughs> big box. Of, that was four years ago. I have no fucking <laughs> I mean, I also. You know. That is also possible. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Link us so, the, the recap. Oh. <laughs> so I'm going to start off yeah. with my first question, just for the three of you, Gosh. which was, in the end, are you happy with how the campaign went? I always I was get, I was briefly distracted by the words Damn. recap. I was wondering if we should play the recap oh, now yeah, before yeah. getting mm. otherwise oh, uh, forget. Did you load the new recap in? Uh, I did not because you were still editing it mm. when I was over there. It just gives me a chance to think about once, it. Once. <laughs> gives me a chance to think about whether I. Here we go. It. Here we go. <laughs> the tricky tatique tells all. 
Turns out the waterbender knew he had the mirror scale all along, faked his own death, delivered stolen Salwan gold, the whole Megilla. But the gang's having none of it, and they make him promise to testify against Takara, but not before getting a recorded backup. It takes now Oda's special shine, Yongsu's potent poultice, Bao's articulate airbending, and Dan's specialized sandbending, but Wan Shitong's library is found, upside down, and in the sky! Dan negotiates a way forward for Seekers to go back to what they do best, roam the world and trade knowledge with an ornery spirit. But when they go to deliver the news to the Order of Passage, Takara has taken control of the temple with incendiary intentions. Young Su drops the hammer on Takata with all the evidence they've accumulated, and the trial's a smash hit. Bao recommits to their family, but the Salwan clan will be looking to them for guidance going forward. Jai gets a leave of absence and the girl, Kai Ming gets a date and the guy, and now finally has fun getting clean. All in a day's work in Republic City! Ooh. Every real first question, are you going to miss those recaps? Yes. <laughs> so, so much! That was, a, yeah, that was such great. a great... I don't know who had the idea. It was me. Okay. I'll take credit. I, I definitely <laughs> feel like we all love the recaps in Korra. Yeah. Like, yeah. They're it so great. fun. It was great. It's a yeah, it's a great conceit. It fits in the world. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh my god. Like we can still do recaps, but I don't think we'll be in a universe where Transatlantic oh my god. radio broadcaster voices how we're going to do our recaps anymore. <laughs> whatever whatever we play next, I am not committing right now to playing an a, uh, a late night AM radio host so that I can do the <laughs> recaps. <laughs> but it was one new thing we did initiate this time was um, us taking turns writing the synopsis. And that was really cool because it meant it was written and we all got to look it over for approval before it was recorded. And that was a really nice like refresher every week. That's the... Every time. At least five. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. That's the wish. Uh, I had a lot of fun mm -hmm. with Avatar Legends of Mirror Scale. Same. Same. That was the question, right? Did you have yeah. fun? Yes. 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 Did you? I did. Um, I, I'm going to throw something out there right oh. off the bat. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, I had a lot of fun with this campaign, despite its mechanics, as opposed to because of them. Mm. A hot take immediately. How do you feel about that statement? Yeah, I think there are probably some huge questions that have to do with the mechanics but uh mm -hmm. i like the simplicity of two dice plus stat i think that by giving us a very specific list it felt too restrictive and also slightly too complicated in that you have to pick one of these and rather than just being like oh yeah i'm going to try this thing like they they are open-ended enough Mm -hmm. But they were kind of just not the right, they didn't hit the mark for me between specific and open-ended. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I feel like we may have just been better. I feel like our play style, because we come from World of Darkness, just being like, cool, roll with creativity, because you're being creative right now. I feel like that would have felt better. Ah, I see what you mean, rather and than fitting into moves. Also, like, only specific. getting, like, every time we assess a situation, I was like, Fuck, do any of these questions actually matter to me? Not really. That's that's just gripes with our playstyle coming mm -hmm. from us. Sort of yeah. playstyle. Mm -hmm. No, I tend to agree with this. I didn't have quite the same sort of like I think critique of like moves. Although mm. I think if if I was to dive a little further in, combat though is was a um, it felt it felt complex but not sort of tactical. It, it, like you know what I mean? It, which is yeah, which is fine, but wasn't what I was expecting out of. That's yeah. Fun. Yeah. Um, for me, my biggest like uh, thing was it's it's also very specific. Was techniques. Um, they were so hard to use because you had to make pretty good rolls in order to use them, especially if they weren't learned um, uh, or if they weren't mastered. But they only came in handy in really, really, really specific scenarios, which again, just didn't come up much in our campaign. That's not to say that it wouldn't be with others, but like, it just felt like there was a lot of the book devoted to techniques. And we didn't really bust them out with that often. Um, 
But we, we tended, we, I feel like we started to, we didn't get, we didn't go into combat very often. No. I feel like if we went into combat more frequently, that would have come yeah, out more that, because they are like looking at them. I would occasionally refer to suction as something I did because it's like pull an object out of someone's hand. Mm -hmm. But that specifically to like perfect it and master it would have required in combat. And as Scott was saying, mm -hmm. like the fact that for a simplified system, there are seven specific steps and you have to pick specific techniques. Like there were a lot of there weren't flow charts like we had with the X3, but I did find that it was a lot of, okay, like I, I have to do so many different things rather than just being like, yeah, I'm going to airbend at them. Oof. Or I'm gonna like make the terrain mm. difficult. Like, yeah, I think. I yeah. Like I appreciate that it is structured because yeah. I've definitely looked at systems before where it's like, when you fight, just like do stuff. You know what I mean? And you're kind of like, well, what what happens now, right? I, I appreciate that it's structured, but it didn't feel like it kind of came out in the wash in the way that I was expecting. I hated the combat system. Ah, <laughs> ah. The, the combat system as it stands, there's some interesting ideas here, but I felt like a lot of the stuff in this game is about preparing things for the next round, for the next roll. Like, okay, well, I will... I will earthbend the arena so that it's all jagged so that the next time somebody tries to do something, they're a, they're at a disadvantage. They're, um, say, in the list. They're here, impaired. That they're impaired, right? Okay, yeah. great. But, like, it always felt like it was going to happen later mm -hmm. and not now. Mm -hmm. And then, even though you could take multiple actions in turn, there was just this feeling of, like, it's... The thing, the thing is, the crosshair mentions, I felt like the combat system would work better in a one-shot setting. It's too complicated for a one-shot, but it's not tactical enough for me to care about like its complexity. Really long, yeah, yeah, yeah. And if this is a game about giving you the fantasy of being in the Avatar universe, which for a lot of players means being a bender, it sure feels kind of weak sauce mm. to be a bender in this combat system. Hmm? Yeah, I and like the fact like you could do something to affect someone, but you could only affect the person you were directly in contact with. Mm -hmm. So you couldn't play a support character really if there were the same number of like combatants. Um, you couldn't affect the terrain for the guy that someone else was fighting right. without disengaging and reengaging. Um, that was that was a tricky thing to wrap our heads around. Yeah. The, the who are you engaged with and yeah. like how hard is it for you to jump from one yeah. opponent to another? Can you engage multiple opponents? Typically yeah. no. Like that was kind of tricky. Yeah. And Kung Fu Fenris says that he resolves a combat system crunch wise and then narrates it. But the game specific like the book tells you it's fiction first. So you're supposed to start with, oh yeah, I wanna like you know, make the terrain difficult. Okay, here's how you do it. Mm -hmm. Rather than, oh, well, I'm gonna do an action that is a, it's a defend know, a maneuver. No, a whatever, right? Ready. Mm -hmm. Or bolster or hinder, and then describe what it does, yeah. Yeah, I'm not used to having to see if something works mechanically before I figure out what I'm doing narratively. Yeah. So, and that's kind of what it is. You're like, whatever I'm gonna do, it's gonna be an evade and yeah. right, so, <laughs> And then you roll, and depending on how you roll, that dictates what you can do. Yeah. So that was like, I don't think I ever fully clicked with that. Because yeah. I'm used to going, oh, this is, this is what I wanna do narratively, but then, I, then you have to like kind of go backwards. Um, sort of how it felt. I really like the tactics part of gaming. I mean, I think that we all do, otherwise we wouldn't bother using a system or we'd use very, very rules simple. light systems. Um, heck, the first game that we streamed was Exalted and you know, we, and I don't think any of us are like, we'll never play Exalted again. Like in, in fact, Exalted's the game we've played almost the most yeah. on this channel. Yeah, yeah. Changeling beats it out just by virtue of the fact that one of our campaigns lasted for fucking ever, but... Uh, <laughs> and we loved it. <laughs> sure, absolutely. But the, the this game does not give enough tactic 
to me. Also, your character sheets. So we played 22 sessions, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. you, there is not enough XP sync no. on these sheets. Like, yeah, we were all full, basically, yeah. right? Uh, two more growths than I would be out of things that I could spend it on. I literally checked every box. And the, the idea, it's not just, like, I appreciate the fact that they're like, look, by that time you should retire the character and play another one. Like, great, that's sure, fine. fine yeah. Except for the fact that there isn't a compelling choice to make eventually you're just like well i guess i'll bump up all my stats because yeah. it's cheap and effective to bump my stats up and i have nowhere else to spend mm. the growth so all the characters feel samey after a while well that's exactly it like i was eventually because i was down to nothing else i could do i upped my harmony my passion but it felt i like part of when i build a character is i like to pick out where my character is weak yes uh, the absolutely. fact that you start with a zero or a negative one or sometimes both depending on your playbook those are information it's what you're good at and what you're particularly like where your weak points are so to slowly grow past that or not so slowly mm -hmm. in the space of 20 sessions be like oh yeah i'm good at everything <laughs> you know cora had four seasons airbender had three, three. seasons like yeah totally no, totally yeah totally so i would say that this is as kung fu fenris is, is saying here this is a system for people who don't play weekly games or people who play 10 sessions and then they're they're out mm -hmm. possibly even to the point where um i would say that this is for like people who sit down and they play for like five hours mm -hmm. and then they're like because we're devoting a, a day to our game mm -hmm. but we're not going to come back for another two months mm -hmm. or another month and then they get to feel a nice change in their characters going forward but not for the style that we play so I'm not necessarily saying this is a bad system, although mm -hmm. the combat system is bad. Oh, I'm hot take. All right, don't no, we like it. We like it. It's good. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it's a bad system. I definitely don't think it's the the system for us. But yet, we still all enjoy the campaign. Yeah. Yes. So, what's the difference between this campaign and Star Wars Reach, our Edge of the Empire campaign? I mean, right off the bat, I want to highlight that character creation and the prologue uh, um, rules that are laid out in the book are super fucking strong, uh, in my opinion, um, especially for people who are new to role playing and maybe aren't so used to rolling a character. The playbooks are so great. They give you a lot of flavor right off the bat. Like I, I created Don because I had no idea what I was going to do going into it. And I just flipped through the playbooks until I found a few that kind of started to spark ideas and then I honed in on something but like it was really 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 great for that it gives you just enough flavor um and then it gives you some mechanical baselines to start with and and then it walks you through a prologue and how you feel about the other PCs in the campaign it forces you to establish a backstory which sometimes depending on time or just depending on us forgetting sometimes we don't do that and it it does show Mm -hmm. uh, in our subsequent campaign. Yeah, or like there, like I appreciate that there's a certain level of depth and time that you have to devote to this prologue. And we're like, oh yeah, we're all good role players. We know how to say how our characters know each other. But then we sometimes do something like Star Wars Reach where I think one of the flaws was we didn't really know the depths of what our how why our characters were actually together, what our goal, short-term goals were. We may, sort of had like life goals in mind mm -hmm. but i don't feel like we knew what the fuck do we want to do next week that's it like i think there was a bit of that whereas this helps you start with like this is what you just did this is why you know each other and it sets you somewhere really really like you're, coming, you're coming out of yeah. a conflict too right so mm -hmm. there's you probably have a history with some baddies as mm -hmm. well right it's mm -hmm. it's got built in so this leads into the first question that we received. We actually received the end of the last session which is from the crosshair. We all know the answer to did you have fun? So his question is, why did you have fun? Mm. Uh, I, uh, I really enjoyed playing in a universe that I have also enjoyed watching over the years and like as a as a role player slash actor slash whatever i really enjoyed trying to have the actions of my character fit within that very light and generally light and fun tone 
you know, oh, could I see this being a part of, I think this is gonna be a question later as well. Could I see this being part of one of the television shows? Yeah, for the most part. Hmm. Not some of the darker shit that happened, fine, but like, um, <laughs> dark sure, yeah, yeah, I mean, honestly, fair, yeah, but I, the reason I had fun, one of, one of the reasons I would say that I had fun is, how, you know, how could Yang Su's actions and conflicts feel like they could be part of a larger, like, television series based on Avatar, that's, and that's cool to me, that's fun, yeah. I often imagine scenarios that have played out in our campaigns, like in my head, I kind of cast it like a movie, I'll put actors in or whatever. Yeah. But in this one, consistently, anytime I was replaying it, it became animated in the same style as the show. So I feel like it absolutely could fit um, with the uh, with the series. And yeah, like it was also just, uh, I mean, Gruber Mensch said it, like we were definitely more familiar with the Avatar world than the Star Wars world. And weirdly and ironically, perhaps. Weirdly and ironically. Given how much media there um, is. Okay. There's not as much to, to learn. It doesn't feel as intimidating. It's easier to learn. That's and so it was easier to just play and see the humor in it as as well. Um, at least that's, yeah, that was the impression I got. It's just like a fun world to play in. Yeah, that's the thing. Like as much as there are dark moments and dark episodes and dark story arcs in the canon series and in the comics, um, and in the books, um, there's still levity, there's still fun, there's still joy. Um, and I feel like, you know, one of our, our collective favorite episode is the um, Ember Island Players, which is a bad play recounting the story. And I think that that and so much of the joy that's in these series is what gave us mm -hmm. the freedom. We, we went to dark places, we did serious stuff. But there was fun at the core. Yeah, love that. Um, and yeah, as Gruberman said, so Avatar has three seasons, they're 22 minute episodes, three seasons of Airbender, four seasons of Korra. That's all that you need, and you already know. Like, honestly, if we weren't set in the Korra era, you don't even need to have watched Korra. So, but that was like, we had watched the whole canon. The game I also went and read the books. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but yeah. The game also does a very good job of presenting the setting. Yeah. That's true. That's that's a that's a really good point. And well. there aren't nearly as many fans who have read all of Wikipedia and will tell you you're wrong. <laughs> yeah, the the intimidation factor from Star Wars I think came a lot an awful lot from like there are people out there who live and breathe this stuff and they will tell us straight up that we're wrong. Mm. As opposed to just like, oh yeah, that's one interpretation, that's fine. But they'll be like, no. I will say the reason why I had fun here is probably because of the prologue. Hmm. Um, I think it's because the three of you were a unit from the start and you had distinctive goals for your characters that the playbooks did help out with. I do think the playbooks aren't for everybody. I know that, Kate, you were struggling a little bit with choosing a playbook at the start because... Not everybody wants to build a character that way of what's my archetype and then how do I fit into it? Mm -hmm. They'd rather say this is my character and then how do I fit into the world? Mm -hmm. But the fact, so I'm not saying that the playbooks are the reason this was, that this worked out, but the fact that everybody was ready and able to sort of dive in, I think that really helped. Mm -hmm. um, and if we can connect with the game and we can connect with the characters sooner, then it's going to be more fun. And the universe let us play. Yeah, uh, which was, which was honestly, um, you know, pretty fun. For a good me. time. That's true. I will say I, the reason why the playbooks worked so well for me in this instance was because I didn't go in with a pre-existing idea. <laughs> if I had, I don't think it would have worked. I specifically so it just happened to time out well by accident. Mm. Yeah, because I specifically was going in like I wasn't coming in with like an action that I wanted to do, but I wanted someone who was. Um, meek and obscure and stuff like that and the, this book is about being the heroes that are gonna change the world like it's specifically anti that you can't be yeah, that based on really these which is why yeah. i initially picked the rogue playbook and like i made a character and i wrote the thing and i answered the questions but it just felt generic and boring to me and i just threw it out i went back to the playbooks <laughs> and then i picked from a playbook and i built someone up from the successor playbook like yeah because i couldn't I couldn't do that in this system. What I remember that? that all happened over the span of like a day, too. It went from like, 
I'm not sure to here's a new con and like <laughs> but like and and you could immediately tell how excited you were about this new character and like all of the mm -hmm. nuances that you'd introduced that was really like it was a very impressive like <laughs> shift and new conceptualizing and it was great and, yeah. yeah spark hit yeah Yay. this game does encourage a collaborative session zero a lot of them these days are mm -hmm. uh and i think that that is absolutely good and look we're we've been playing together for a very long time and we've been playing a lot yeah together That's for true. a very long time mm -hmm. and so sometimes if you come off a campaign like we did for changeling where we played you know over 130 <sighs> episodes it starting over is something you don't start campaigns that often or at least we don't because we tend to play longer campaigns so having that moment of oh this is where we can go next mm -hmm. this is what we can do is is sometimes helpful uh i am going to throw some questions over to the audience here because i think that there were uh some interesting things we have a lot of them and i want to make sure we can get through a whole bunch of them so we'll start with this one pukajusu asked do you feel like the story you told is one you could easily see in the world of avatar as part of the series yes i yes with the exception of the fact that it felt big enough and, and this is not a criticism of you or us at all, but like it felt big enough that the Avatar would probably want to hand in it at some point. Mm. I know she's very busy in the Earth Kingdom right now. Feel like at some point she would have been like the the mirror. What? The spirit. I need to. I need to. I need to talk to someone. You know. But uh, but at like a hundred. It just if it was in the TV series, Korra would have arrived at some point and been like out of my way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. But for for sure, this little ragtag group of not weirdos, but like. I don't know. They, yeah, a hundred percent. There were definitely moments um, during sessions that something would be happening and be like, "This feels like it's lifted out of the doubt. Like the the vibe, the feel of it. Super and Stu Bender. Uh, yeah. uh, um, <laughs> For me, the John, fight in the boba shop. Yeah. John pulling out Varric. Uh. <laughs> hey, Gil asks, since we didn't see your character creation process, what drew you to the concepts? What was the thing you were most excited about playing the character before the game started? And what went in a completely different way than you expected? I feel like we answered a bunch of I'm going to start with that. I'm going to jump in first because I've already basically answered it. Um, and just add in that from the successor, the fact that you come from um, a famous lineage, that there it gives you specific things to latch onto to build from, which is like Liz said, that this is good for someone that's newer to role playing in that... Like, you don't have to have a whole idea yourself. You kind of start from here and build it out. And that's what worked for me. And that's what got me excited was, okay. And I had read the um, Kiyoshi books, mm -hmm. which has the Sawan. It has a Camilla Peony lore. Um, so that was fresh in my mind. So I was thinking, what is this powerful, famous, infamous family? The people who lost that fight. Yeah. Uh, so, cool. so that's where I went. And I was like, okay, what would they be like, you know, three, four, five hundred years later? Mm -hmm. Totally. Um, I, I'm not struggling to remember every, like, I'm just struggling to remember some specifics here, but I, I think, as I often do, I was looking for inspiration away from the sort of two characters I had played before, um, one of which was, uh, relatively bubbly and intellectual, and one of which was, uh, <laughs> relatively, um, extra i feel like pyres was quite extra so i i was interested in i know right who me uh i wanted to i was looking for a playbook that would encapsulate someone who had uh, a very um simple way of living i also love that in the avatar universe especially in the era of korra uh there is a dichotomy of people who live like the old way and then the new way, right? Like technology has arrived to a lot of the Korra universe, but not all of it. So I wanted to play with that. I think the hammer was exciting for me because it was very clear. It was a very clear, I am pursuing this person for this reason. And it just kind of made all of the decisions very straightforward, which is cool. What changed though? I did, I, I, um, I don't think I was expecting. Uh, I don't think I was expecting Yangsu to be quite so. I don't know, like wrapped up in the emotional turmoil of what he was going through. I don't think he was making decisions based on like, oh, I'm ruining everyone else's life. It's not like it was. No, it's not self-sacrificing. But it, 
I was just surprised by sort of how much became kind of emotional in the latter half of the campaign. You know, it was cool. There you go. That's me. Um, as I said, I was just flipping through playbooks and looking at which ones jumped out at me. And if I recall, uh, the icon and I think the rogue were two that kind of jumped out at me and started creating characters that I hadn't played either before or in a while. Mm -hmm. um, the idea of this like spirituality mm. aspect was something that I couldn't really recall having uh, dived into before. And same thing with this rogue. Um, so yeah, and then John and I had a really great discussion where we started creating the order of passage and we started like tossing ideas around about what that looked like. And that got me really excited uh, for this character. Um, the things that surprised me, I had originally, my, my main idea for Don's like struggle was that I figured she didn't really want to find the library because she knew that when she did, suddenly her life would be all about That's that. Right. And I intended for that to be a longer struggle for her. But as soon as, like I, at one point in a session, I in character just blurted out, the mirror scale belongs to the library and I need to find the library. And then suddenly it was like, oh, well, and everything came, so that's what surprised me. <laughs> um, but it was great and I'm really happy that, that it went that way. Uh, but that was probably the biggest surprise. <laughs> surprise for that character. Mr. Sess, what made you pick each bending or lack of bending style? Um, the dichotomy of being an airbender from the Fire Nation after the Hundred Years War. That's not its actual name. Sorry, that's real history. It really, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but after, after all of that war was an interesting thing. Um, I felt like it was less covered in the universe you really only saw ang you saw some from the airbenders but it was the newness to it to the world the freedom to sort of decide what i wanted to be was exciting mm. um and the fact that i decided to take the move to have a second training of technology was mostly based on i can't have another uh bending style and i don't want to also be a weapons bender so uh, weapons, bender. weapons bender yeah. <laughs> <laughs> whereas i think i uh you know have to feel like I'm different from everybody all the time. That was uh, just a joke, nice, but like, <laughs> okay, cool, thanks. Uh, no, no, I, I wanted to, when the Hammer playbook came into it, I was like, I would like to, I, I would, I think this character should have a weapon that is a physical extension of his self, as opposed to a bending style that's an extension of the sort of like um, theme of force. I wanted a weapon that sort of uh, communicated that and then would become uh, a romanceable NPC in and of itself. Very important for me to have uh, an, inanimate, an inanimate object to romance when possible. Name a better duo. Name a better duo, Scott, and things Ooh. that shouldn't be romanced. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, and for me, I just really loved the concept of sandbending. It felt like it wasn't explored much in the shows. Um, and it also made a lot of sense this, uh, from what John and I created about the Order of Passage, that it would be uh, full of sandbenders who were totally trained and ready to operate in the desert. They just needed the library back. <laughs> so, it was cool. Laura Vargas mentioned the wire, we the ones wire. handling this and not X feeling is really hard to deal with. Good to see the Ed Fun despite the story going in that sort of direction. It's a problem in a lot of ways. Um, people were mentioning also this is an issue in like Marvel films and mm. comic books. Like, if you have somebody who's as powerful as like the Scarlet Witch, why the hell isn't she just? doing everything um and i think some of it ends up being like they need a break or they there may be another crisis that they're not yeah. currently worried about yeah sure but it, it is something that you kind of have to deal with the avatar universe has the avatar as somebody who's like i am important and i i am kind of the person who just shows up and deals with this kind of problem but uh i think that in a lot of games you can just kind of mentally sort of be like the okay, we're just not going to assume that every problem can be solved by one person. I noticed that one decision that you made, John, was you didn't really refer to her in our campaign. It wasn't like, oh, she would be here, but you didn't you didn't give excuses for why she wasn't present. Personally, I appreciated that um, mm -hmm. because it just made it easier to be like, look, we know she's not going to show up because we, this is our fight. Mm -hmm. So like, that means she doesn't factor into it. We're not going to like, we're going to spend all this energy explaining where she is, yeah. why she isn't here. I was wondering what everybody's thoughts were about that. 
I tend to agree. Mm-hmm. That's my thought. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> the, the thing is, the point of playing, especially this game, is that you get to be the heroes of the story. You get to be the Toffs and... I can't remember any other characters. The Sokka? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> My brain just Bolins. emptied. Uh, oh, yeah, Mako. exactly. You get to Asami. be all of the characters that aren't so. the Avatar. Um, and, like, if the plot is going to be interesting, if they're going to be stakes, at some point, yeah, it would be a big enough deal that the Avatar would theoretically get called in. But that's not interesting. That's like being like, okay, you're a bunch of adventurers. There's a dragon attacking the town and there's an evil sorcerer. Oh, but this level 20 paladin comes in because he's the local hero and he kills everyone. You enjoyed watching me talk for two hours. Right. Thank you for coming to the game. (laughs) That's not interesting. So you just have to be like, okay, cool. Uh, You know, you either find a way to have a cameo from the avatar because the book does cover that Mm -hmm. but ultimately if you want your game to be interesting it's not an npc that's solving all the problems i i would like i would argue i think there's there's a there's a narrow window where you could have real stakes but that aren't important for Mm -hmm. people outside of your game right Mm -hmm. like i feel like you could do that i wonder how interesting that would be on stream is my question i mean we could have been based in some small smaller sure. like not republic city and not dealing with the spirits it might not have sure. become avatar tier then mm. but it's still I, I just feel like at some point with every movie like with marvel it's like come on you're in new york city why isn't spider-man here come on <laughs> duh he's busy <laughs> <laughs> i do think that there's um there is something to be said about figuring out how do you balance a universe where the stories tend to be around the avatar yeah, sure right except that in this game you're not the avatar we could have downscoped it mm-hmm. yep. we could have made the game a lot less of a a, 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 a lot less of a, a pressing issue especially when it comes to the spirit world especially when it comes to uh, a, a councilwoman kind of thing and just be like yeah you're just fighting some triads sweet <laughs> right which is fine and that's totally okay but the the shows are very specifically it's the avatar and the avatars group uh as opposed to a plucky firebender and that's it right (laughs) but then they also have the the power system in in these games are also very weird the avatar is incredibly op except when they're not right yeah that's like oh wow Aang can do so much and then he goes up against azula and then he can't do squat right or korra is like like already shown to be a precocious bender she can always already master all of the elements and then one waterbender comes along and goes like Bleh! and then she's like oh no and falls over because that's just how they edit the show that's how they write the show um it's a soft magic system it's incredibly soft it is not well defined and the power levels are you're as powerful as we need you to be in this moment yeah i am so okay with it being a soft magic oh, system. Yeah. Bending, sure. yeah. bending without like an appendix of things that do very specific like Water whip. Okay, I'm gonna use my water whip to, you know, no, like I don't need this. Yeah, that was nice. It's really great. I I like that. Uh, If I was gonna run a campaign and I was worried about, oh, well, why isn't the Avatar here? I would set it five years after the Avatar of the Era had passed. That way, the new Avatar, maybe they've been found, but they're fucking five years old. I'm sorry. Even Korra at five years old, (laughs) who was like, oh, the Avatar, (laughs) boo boo. Um, Like, specifically, (laughs) then it makes sense that, okay, well, the Avatar is. Either we haven't found them yet, or they're literally five years old, so other people yeah. have to solve the problem. So, yeah. Yeah. That's cool. That's a good way of doing it. I hand too. that over to people that have that concern. Boom. Let's go for some other questions on here. Um, <laughs> here, we'll throw in. I'm, I'm avoiding this, but I should. I'll throw one to me. What was the inspiration for the mirror scale, the artifact itself? What made you choose it as a central point of focus to the campaign? I was looking for a title. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I needed a title for the game and figured that I wanted to come up with something that wasn't like Avatar, the bending. Right? Like, I didn't want that. Uh, I, I wanted it to have something that was also a little bit mysterious for the players to start thinking like, oh, what is that? Right? MacGuffins are MacGuffins because they work. Yeah. And I needed something that sounded a little cool. So I picked mirror scale because I thought that scale could have referred to a dragon. It could have referred to a balance. Um, it could have referred to uh, 
a measurement unit. Is it a musical scale? <laughs> musical scale? I, I don't it's... think that fits Avatar very well, but possibly. Um, the music. So, <laughs> also, Captain Sweet is saying, I'd argue to say Avatar the Bend and ing ing would have been amazing. That would be the next campaign that Yay! we announced right now. Whoa! The bending ing 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 I'm playing the third ing. <laughs> uh, so that's why that's why the mirror scale came up. I I retroact like I retroactively came up with what the mirror scale was based on the title of the game. The very I mean like it, for some people I think this will be disappointing like oh you didn't mastermind everything beforehand and be, no I never do that I'm I this when I do role playing games I'm always doing it by the seat of my pants uh, because I want to accommodate my wishes and the players mm. and then after. After we got information on things like the order of passage and the destruction of your hometown and the intrigue with your family, I started trying to think of like, well, what could I do that can tie into these things? Um, mm. And then it came to, okay, so the mirror scale is an object. All right. It's a MacGuffin. Uh, a mirror is something that you look into. Okay. And then it evolved from there. Um, the idea that it was... A reflection of the spirit world came from your character concept the fact that you were heavily spiritually based I was like okay well we need something for that but then i needed to have political power because i wanted it to tie into nice. your stories yeah, yeah. so the the original concept behind the mirror scale was it would be powerful because anybody who was using it could use it to predict the future as long as they had access to the other world so if takata for instance had got a hold of the mirror scale gone into the spirit world and thought what if i declared my candidacy for the next election she would have seen what would have happened and then she could have been like okay that's not what i want because she would then see the real world because mm -hmm. she was in the spirit mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. that was the, you actually caught on to that pretty quick yeah the idea that if it shows the spirit world here what does it show if you're in the spirit world because that was the the sort of the 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 clincher mm -hmm. at that point and the thing that I kind of liked about it is that in the end, the mirror scale was not really the focus. It was used a few mm. times, which I was like, and I always put a little bit like, are you sure? You yeah. Like, but mostly not because I was like, it's going to melt your brain, but because I wanted it's to gonna make you it's, show up dead. I'm sorry. It's, a, it's pretty much yeah. melting your brain. I wanted to point. imply that it was a serious yeah. thing. Like oh, it yeah. was a, it was a, you know, anybody using this could easily become addicted to the idea of now I know what will happen. Mm. Right. Um, but it wasn't the focus. The focus was on the three of you and what you were doing. And sure, the mirror scale mattered, but it I didn't want the game to be about the object. And I don't think it ended up being that way. I agree. So, hmm? uh, I wear pants. Actually, no. Flower of August at the moment. I am not wearing pants. Honestly. Nice. He's back from where Let's I'm sitting. I can't that. tell whether he's got anything. The pant cam. Okay. Click. Uh, we can't just have a... When Kai Ming said two truths and a general. lie to Don, I think Bao is cute. I think Young Su is cute. I think you're cute. Which one was the lie? I want each of you to write down what she... It is... The answer is one of these three things. It's not like cheap. Like, she wasn't lying at all. Uh... There is a small twist to it, but like she was lying for one of them. So who do you think she was lying about? I'm not wearing jorts, Kung Fu Fenris. Jorts! <laughs> I feel like I knew which one I thought it was at the time. I don't remember, so I'm going to write down my guess right now. All right. We do have some of the benefit of hindsight, it's true. And let's have a look. I, Young Su, she thinks he's fine. I wrote Bao. Bao, Young Su. Uh, Liz has it correct. Ah, yeah, correct. that was the rest of my thought. She oh, was, not cute. She huh? was sexually attracted to. I mean, she was ready to like kiss and cuddle and stuff with everybody, but she actually thought Young Su was attractive, so she did not want to refer to him. Wanted as cute. to jump his three section staff, if you will. Because oh. <laughs> I broke my dick in two places. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say that. That's <laughs> well. Oh boy, it's just a, a horrible arm reaping <laughs> accident. <laughs> They brought one machine to Ondong <laughs> and it did this to my penis. Uh, Kofi Pinter asks, what point did you feel the system clicked for you? I think we kind of covered this. Like, it made relatively decent sense to me off the bat. Yeah, yeah. Even within the first two sessions, we it... had a number of moves and a combat. Mm -hmm. And it felt 
appropriate, you know? Like, it just, yeah, it was working. It was working well. Tunku Fenris also asked at the end of the last session, do the characters embrace balance or do they go into their new life as dedicated to a principle? Well, so I so, famously did embrace uh, care. Uh, or Yangtze, rather. Yeah. Famously. So we'll, we'll show what your balances were. Um, I don't think Yongsu is like capable of doing things without some degree of like directness. You know, I, he's not a subtle or sort of indirect kind of person, but yeah, I, th I I feel it felt appropriate that he would embrace that principle. I think Don was embracing balance. Um, that her intention was to return to the order, make amends, and find a new way forward. We didn't play that out, but that would be what her epilogue would look like. Mm. Uh, and this this was kind of, um, and I think there's another question about it elsewhere, but this was sort of the struggle with balance for me, is that the nuance between what I established canonically as a tradition of my family and the progress away from, like, theoretically away from it, but there was enough parallel between them that I don't know how to answer that, mm. in that... Bao is going to use the traditions that they were raised with. They use them, we saw more and more of it towards the end of the campaign, um, but to steer the family towards progress. Yeah. So I, have, I have no idea what that seems would balance yeah. yeah, this, I think that answers this yeah. though, right? Yeah. Like, so have resolved. they resolved the inner conflicts? And I think the conflict, the, the, the big conflicts may have been resolved. Who knows if new conflicts would have arisen? Sure. But, I would love to know, John, do you feel comfortable talking, uh, speaking to any of the NPCs and like what their, uh, is it principle for the NPC? Because they have one, right? Yeah, I think it's principle. Usually, yeah. Je okay, so the book suggests that, uh, the book suggests that um, it's a, hmm. sorry, I didn't, I didn't let it finish its mm -hmm. thing before, so I have to reset it. Uh, the characters mostly just have a principle that drives mm -hmm. them and that they can sometimes like because balance is something that player characters have to deal with uh but uh did you pre-establish all of the npc's principles or was it more like as you got to know them better and as i had ideas in my head for them, but as is typical when i create npcs i often don't stat them out mm -hmm. uh i create the npc with an with an idea of, of like an archetype in mind, like Kaiming, I knew from the start, for instance, that Kaiming was a Kyoshi warrior. So I knew that she'd be good at fighting and that she has some deficiencies and some strengths. But I didn't establish what her specific principle was right away because some of that is also I want to see where the world is going. Because also, I'm not going to spend that much time on an NPC if the three of you don't care about them oh yeah. that's it right if we're like oh fuck this boba shop like it's always yeah. getting attacked we're out like yeah, yeah bad news like, fuck this we're we're gone then <laughs> I, I, I don't want to be the guy who's like but i spent four hours for you who came in would uh but <laughs> i yeah so it the the concept of principles for me became less and less important because you almost never attacked based on that mm -hmm. um, so yeah. that's that's also just a function of like where did the mechanics fall for us? Yeah, I found I found that mechanic especially felt very slow in combat, considering it was often you could do one round or two or three rounds and be done. It felt like it would take longer than the combat, and I would get like murdered while I was trying. Um, <laughs> you kind of needed to build them up. Like there yeah, was I wish it was easier to too. learn. I wish it was easier to learn what NPCs' principles were because I found myself very curious about them. But aside from now, who we who we learned was protect. It just didn't feel super easy to establish. And I was really curious about Kai Ming's, about Jai's. And Do like, you want to know what they are? I'd love to if you're comfortable sharing them. So Kai Ming's principle was honor. Sure. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Um, the, My honor. Yeah, My a little honor. bit. Like, I, I kind of wanted it, I kind of wanted an alternate take on the Zuko. Yeah. Right? Like, the, the idea that she is willing to suffer for her honor as opposed to complain about their honor. Mm. Right? Like, Zuko... Zuko was like, I have to get my honor back. She never felt she lost her honor, but she felt that it demanded things of her. Mm -hmm. And that was the problem. So that's that was just a different view of that. Uh, Jai's was control, mm -hmm. but in fact, it was control of himself as opposed to control of other people. 
Um, so he didn't like necessarily having to deal with orders, but he knew that that was his job. It's why he was constantly focused on like the very precision firebending that he was trying mm -hmm. to do because he wanted to be able to make his own decisions and his own path. And he felt like he couldn't do that um, until he got in close with Bao, realized that Bao was, whether on purpose or not, making a claim to the family and then being like, maybe I won't have to be what everyone else wanted me to be. Maybe mm -hmm. I can take control of my own stuff. Who else did you want to know about? Well, those were the two big ones. I guess I feel like there was a third. Like now, was already... now was protect. Protect? Now protect. Yeah, that one was the I think the only one we established. Yeah. Um maybe it was an episode it wasn't. First. It was Oh god. I don't know. Yeah, I just remember writing it down. I don't even remember how we learned it. Yeah. Um I think it was even pre spirit portal yeah. walk. Mm. Uh the first one. Yeah. Uh Takata? Takata? Uh mm. Takata was funnily enough, it was not power but wealth. Mm. Oh damn. Uh, the the idea that she could use her wealth mm. anywhere to get what she wanted. So she didn't think of it in terms of power. She thought of it in terms of her her wealth Cash and money. her gains. And therefore, the actions that she was taking was to further her wealth mm -hmm. as opposed to further her power. Nice. Do you think that after Jai's leave of absence, do you think he would have tried like do you think he would have returned to the military or do you think he would have tried to like stay away from that life for longer i think he would have returned to the military but probably tried to take a more of an advisory role as opposed to a command role um the he was still dedicated to the idea that peace was more important that uh his his definite belief was if we have a good military unit it is in order to protect what we have as opposed to take from others. And I think he would have realized at a certain point he wasn't as comfortable with the idea of orders as he was comfortable with the idea of um, using the resources that Salwan had in order to protect the new Fire Nation, mm -hmm. even from itself, right? Because his main thing that he really didn't want was or any remnants of the Hundred Years' War to come back. Mm -hmm. No. Right? He didn't want to be the Fire Nation general who's like, I blew up it down because it's good. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah. Um, I know Bao's intentions before he made his own choice was just to be like, great, I assign you to guard our new asset, which is the, um, the uh, temple, order of passage. Order of passage. Um, AKA, like, take some time where you're more free to figure out yourself. So I think oh, I would definitely like sit down and try to get him to say what he wants, which they had not yet succeeded in doing this <laughs> entire fucking campaign. <laughs> <laughs> tell me what oh, you want. Oh, I'm so conflicted. Uh, tell me what you want. He didn't know what he wanted, which is fine. It's that's very, like, I loved it. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like, I feel like that would have been. What do you want? Go do it. I approve. Who was the rug person that was with Zen yes. Vendor? It was Tatik. Yeah. I, I was thinking I, that at the end. Now that we, yeah. when we got to yeah. the end, I was like, it oh, was okay. Tatik. Tatik had hired uh, mm -hmm. Zen T to mm -hmm. fake his own death. Mm -hmm. What he didn't anticipate was losing the mirror scale in the process. Mm. Wild. He was, he was trying to disappear. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, of course. He was trying to disappear from the Southern Water Tribe, mm -hmm. who had like, at that point, had his number and mm -hmm. their knives for closing him. the net mm -hmm. around him, and he also wanted to make people assume that the mirror scale was lost. He, he did intend to protect the spirit realm. Like he was a northern water tribe person, like very much like mm -hmm. spirit realm, very important, and he didn't trust anybody. Um, so there was that. But yeah, it was it was uh, it was Tatik. I mean, that was what launched don being so absolutely furious with with him mm -hmm. was him saying that he was basically like implying or flat out stating that he was the one who had the spirit realm's best interests at heart like she was like fuck you i can speak louder than words buddy like I just... so mad at times he found the exchange system counterintuitive yep mm -hmm. we're just moving on mm -hmm. wow uh, incredible. I'm just, yeah, I'm just bouncing around. Yeah. Oh, that does fun. explain why Zenti had that gold. True. Yep. Uh, from a storyteller and from a player point of view, would you recommend this game as a starter role-playing game, or where does it land on the need experience scale? 
It's a great question. Um, I would recommend it as a starter game, especially to people who are fans of the world. And if it's experienced role players, I would ask them what their favorite games are. And then I could be able to say, okay, then I think you would like this game, or I think maybe this game would would need to be tweaked a little bit to suit your your group. That's my answer. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I'm not sure I have much more to add to that. It's yeah. uh very much a this is gonna be a game that you're gonna have to look at and decide if it's for you. Um, but I do think that you could be a good starter game. Mm -hmm. I don't I think it's, no, don't I think it. the book does actually quite a good job of, every book is like, if you're new to role-playing, this is what a die, die is. Um, but this one, I feel like specifically the character creation, the session zero, like all of that, I feel like it does cater towards new role-players. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't have a ton of experience working with newer role-players to build a character, but I feel like this would be a very exciting version of that discussion as opposed to you know other systems where building a character you also need to work in a lot of mechanical like crunch to to explain like oh okay so i'll just take some dots in this because that's what i want to be good at you're like well yeah but you can only take this many dots because of this and like unless you spend your bonus like it's just going to get really confusing mm -hmm. <laughs> if they don't know what's going on i had to go back to find the answer to this question <gasps> Uh, yeah, I would not recommend EX3 as someone's first game oh, unless they really, they seem someone who likes that kind of ready. Yeah. Right. When Jai said, is she, what was he about to say? So the initial intention was, is she single? single. It's, that's not actually it. It <gasps> was, is she Sela? Okay. Oh, damn. Damn. Uh, what did I find challenging about the Avatar verse to run games in? Hmm. Nothing really oh, okay. about the world itself. The the thing that I wish that I'd done a bit more in this game was to give people an opportunity to use their specific powers, like airbending, earthbending, and weapons. And hit. But the combat system <laughs> sucked, which kind of dropped your staff out of the equation. And then... Uh, that's i guess the, the the part that i found challenging is mostly just i was curious to see like oh what, what what would bending be like in this universe and i don't think i really touched upon it a whole lot i feel like yeah you know if if we had uh done if there was like tra traversing obstacles for some reason i don't know why we would be in a position where we were traveling a lot and traversing obstacles right mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you know bending and like brute forcing like i think i feel like you know, we would have found some creative solutions, yeah. but like, do you want to watch 10 episodes of that? Well, <laughs> I think yeah, if, if our story did involve some travel cross country, it would have come up more. Yeah. We were always going yeah. by ship or summer shark mm -hmm. or airship. Which is, I mean, it's what I wanted. <laughs> yeah. So I'm thrilled. Uh, was the decision to move the plot out of Republic City out of desire from players or was it a whim of the narrator? Ah, uh, a whim. Yeah, John just walks up to us sometimes and goes, guys, I have a whim today. And we're like, oh, fine. Okay, whatever. I'm kidding. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to. I don't remember the exact sequence of events, but we had. You were being chased by the police and blackmailed by the councilwoman, so we had to get out of Dodge. Oh, I was, huh? Okay, yes, all right. You. Yep, it was. Yep, it yes, was you. you. Were. <laughs> Young in too. Discussion. In our discussion, we realized that one of the things that we like about games is the players like to accumulate uh, NPCs and, and adopt them. Yeah, uh, oh, for sure. Which means that we like having a home base, but being able to move. And we had originally designed this game as we'll start it in Republic City, but then we will definitely go elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And it just ended up that you stayed, stayed a while at Kyoshi Island, and then you ended up at the uh, the blank. And then you went to uh, Fire Fountain City, mm -hmm. and then you returned to Republic City because that the, the campaign was kind of winding down. Mm -hmm. So we didn't go in a ton of different places. But that's what we had initially discussed. Do you mm -hmm. feel like that still was how it worked out for you? Yeah. I think, so. I, I think I think you are right that the timeline of when that travel started to happen, it, I, you know, we were forced to either engage with an enemy at a specific early point in the campaign or take our travel. <laughs> I feel like generally John tends to give us a few threads to pull, and there's one that we collectively always feel is the most urgent. When yeah. not necessary, and sometimes that means we leave something that's also relatively urgent by the wayside because we have to pick. Fire rounds, yeah. Huh? <laughs> Ramsey, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Uh, 
Gil asks, one thing I'm unclear of in terms of the order of events. Did Sela steal the Selwyn gold to cover her parents' debt, which resulted in Takata blackmailing her, or did she go to Takata for help? Uh, Takata went to her. Mm -hmm. uh, Takata was the one who got her parents in debt. Damn. Then Takata went to her daughter, their daughter, and said, "We, I can help you. Then said, he, I'm going to make it possible for you to do this. And then thoroughly had her under her thumb. Mm. Basically like, okay, well... Now I know that you stole gold from this really powerful Fire Nation family. So I own you. Yeah. And she was like, yep. <laughs> so she so she stole the Sawan gold. Sela did. Yeah. Um, and they it was basically in a in a like a a cache or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um and then Tatik was moving that gold yes. to Sela for her. Yes. Okay, so it went place. Takata going to Sela, mm -hmm. and then did Sela go to Tatik? Like, how did Sela and Tatik meet? Tatik was hired by Takata to move things, including pay okay. off. But the thing is, Takata realized that she was going after the mirror scale, and then just failed to deliver the package at a certain point, kept it, and then was like, oh, I don't know where it's supposed to go. Uh, Tatik said he made yeah, it? Yeah, okay, gotcha. I... Gotcha, gotcha. Love it. Scott, did it feel limiting to play a non-bender next to two other bending PCs? Not in this system. No. I wonder if it was a much crunchier... Si <laughs> well, I, I think actually this is uh, part of... I, I mean, it's a whole other discussion that we're not going to get into, or at least I'm not going to get into it, but I feel like Exalted as a universe is very much engaged in this discussion right now. If there are different levels, quote-unquote, of Exalt, do you put one system where they can all play together or do you make a system where there's a very clear delineation and power level? Mm -hmm. And I think within the context of this system, I didn't feel less powerful. That, in fact, the game explicitly it states... a way to, to tell you that you're not. Yeah, Asami doesn't have to be less badass than the Benders. And in fact, she's more badass than the Benders, let's be real. Uh, hands up, Asami, best character? <laughs> anyway. Easy peasy. In Korra? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we all know player Zuko from Fire. Uh, well, Uncle Iroh and Toph, like, I always love them so, so much. The, what about what about the guy who plays actor Zuko? Is what actor, Zuko actor Zuko is also <laughs> actor Toph. always good. Actor Zuko, yeah. <laughs> I got a good look at you. All the actors, they don't even, they're, not, they're in a whole class. No, it's all Do you think it would have felt better if you say only assessed growth or XP once a month? No, I want there to be options for players to uh, specialize and diversify their characters and I don't like it when it's just I mean we could have just I could have only handed out like half the experience yeah. sure but I that would have just meant the characters would have taken longer to feel generic ouch I, <laughs> no but fair like I know I, I, I feel I, like the first few growth I wanted soon I feel like mm -hmm. there are a couple of things like moves which ended up not really using but like I thought they would be more useful than they ended up being um, in the playstyle we had. Um, and like one or two stat increases, like a little bit of that I wanted soon. So I think the slow drip I might have felt like the first few growths would have taken me long. We yeah. tend to play systems where uh, f further investments cost more resource. Mm -hmm. So your XP doesn't go as far after yeah, a few sessions. Like a, or, or rather, it takes more yeah. to invest in cost eight or whatever, right? Like, cost goes up. Yeah, exactly. Speed goes down. Whereas here, linear. It, yeah, it's li it's linear, which feels odd after a few sessions. I think. Yeah, interesting. Ready for a big one, Kate? Whoa! <laughs> in my eyes, Bao started out avoiding their family, then intensifying fear as there were more signs of Sawan involvement in the plot. From there, they later started playing their family, eventually coming to a place where I felt they were ready to make a serious attempt to lead the whole clan. Kate, when do you think Bao shifted from fear to determination? What made them go all the way to engage in the scheming they avoided and feared in the beginning? And can you picture a scenario where they'd kept avoiding their family, perhaps seeking other allies to more directly go against the so on? Um, so Bao had run from their family when they started airbending. It was a break for, like, it was, it was a reason to break away from a system that they were already struggling in, partially influenced by uh, Kaisuke, their inventor cousin. Um, but this airbending was something that they could instantly see being used by their family to the advantage, um, 
and it was something that just was new and scary and uh they just needed to get away so they did um and they only wanted to return when they could return on their own terms mm. they didn't want to be a tool or a puppet um and that was the tradition was that you use and you manipulate in subtle ways to get what you want um so that was why they were running and so they shifted from fear to determination as they got to know these folks they got to see other ways of life and the situations they were dealing with proved to bow that they were able to deal with things mm -hmm. and it was through this time and also reconnecting with their cousin it was like a taste of oh yeah my family can i deal with my family now and seeing how he was relating with the family so that was sort of the shift i don't know whether i can specify a, a time probably uh on kyoshi island or leaving kyoshi island somewhere around there i would say um Oh, could you bring it back? Sorry. Nope. I... It's gone. Pop. Really? I clicked the button, it's gone. It definitely I, I, there were two seemed other like um there were two other like questions. when Bao started pushing back against Shy. Yeah. Um and started like because I feel like it, it I got the impression that that Bao saw Jai as kind of a cautionary tale for what would happen if you became too um like enmeshed with the wants and needs of your family and totally mm -hmm. disregarded your own. Mm -hmm. And so when Bao started pushing back on Jai and like gave some real tongue lashings, um, it felt like that sort of coincided with Bao's own like, oh, I think I know my family better than like, I think, yeah, I, yeah. Got a, I think I'm getting a plan. I think like they need me. I can deal with Jai. Maybe I can deal um, with more of them. Oh, yeah, them. yeah, very much. Mm -hmm. uh picture scenario where they kept avoiding their family uh yeah um i think if they hadn't met up with these folks if they hadn't gotten pulled into out of the sort of survival on their own that they had carved out for themselves before the campaign began if they just kept doing odd jobs and stuff they would have maybe crawled up into like republic city civics but I don't know if they'd ever have gone home mm. unless there was a crisis with the family. Like if all this stuff happened and they saw their family come in and do this, then they'd probably worm their way back. Yeah. But I You'd think it would have right? been very different. That's yeah. very fair. Can I can I quickly just like just a quick tangent because it you talking about yeah. Bao and Bao's yeah, yeah, yeah. arc and journey made me think of something that I think is actually super underrated um, on the playbooks themselves. You know, fighting techniques and your stats and yada, yada, yada. Under character and history, there's connections, which they've given two specific, very specific phrases that you are meant to identify with another PC or I guess maybe an NPC, depending on how many people are in the party, etc. Which I feel like we all used to create the sort of initial relationships. And then I haven't looked at these in mm -hmm. weeks, mm -hmm. but it's it's um, it's influenced how the relationships between the characters develop. Like I always felt like Young Su was learning a lot from Bao. And then to hear just now about Bao learning mm -hmm. from, I guess, us mm -hmm. and ways of life. And I, I remember now reading I wrote, Bao has a way to solve problems with words instead of fists. It's really impressive. Like, <laughs> it's just a jumping off point in how we chose to relate to each other. Oh, the unseems free of their past in a way. I wish I could let go of mine. Hearing them talk about being in the moment feels amazing. Wow. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. We're going to throw one more Bao question oh, in here. Bao, Bao, Bao. How did Bao feel about Kai Ming, especially after the dumpling night on Kiyoshi Island and after the non kiss as she woke up on the summer shark? Uh, Bao was interested. Um, I think if they hadn't been told to kiss Kai Ming, they, if the moment had happened, it would have happened. Um, but as soon as it was uh, a thing that was put into words, they were like, no, I'm not going, like, then I, I'm not going to force this. I need to, like, mm. do this properly. Um, and then they saw things developing with uh, Yang Su, and they're like, goodbye. <laughs> Air bear <Bye>. away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, there was definitely potential feels. This is also from Ellie's spot. I forgot to put the name in front of him. Sorry. Uh, to me, I think this campaign is a masterclass on how to weave a main plot that tie all PCs together, makes each PC the main character of their own story, and lets everybody have the spotlight in a balanced manner. Do you think the system lends itself particularly well to crafting such plots, 
or were I just on fire this time? Objection! Leading the witness! <laughs> <laughs> what was the system? Could I highlight some design aspects that achieves this? If it was all me, can I do a clinic hours describing my process of crafting the plot in more detail? Objection. I'm going to run to the washroom yeah. and answer this beast of a question. Uh, beast. Beast. It's... N- the system does a pretty good job of making sure that during character creation characters are linked to each other but it doesn't necessarily like uh, okay i'll be very honest with you i tend not to read a lot of storyteller chapter bits where it's like here's how to craft a narrative i know how to craft a narrative i don't need to read a book that's your day job (laughs) that's that's what i do so i i don't know uh, bluntly, I can't tell you, so I'm not going to pretend that the book is good or bad in that respect. Um, the, It's not the system. The system itself doesn't contain any sort of uh, mechanical reasons to stick with a group or to do that. The only mechanical thing that it has is guide and comfort, mm-hmm. which uh, is not really something about plot lines and storylines. Um, I took a conspiracy and I the it was it was a bit of a of a rush um to to hope not a rush what am I what am I what's the correct word for me uh it was touch and go there for a bit because I I always wanted to take into mind a few things maybe I will do a clinic hours on this but at its core the three of the three characters that I had to um in front of me all had different things right they weren't all saying we want to take down the corrupt republic city police one of them is i have a councilwoman who blew up my village one of them i have a family who may or may not want to use me for my abilities or for my intellect and it's kind of difficult for me to deal with that uh what do i do and i had one who was i am a part of an of a of an ancient order constantly seeking knowledge and dealing with the spirit world so all three of them were so different that there was a part of me that's like, I can't, I don't want to do three plots. Hmm. Because if I do three plots, I also, I didn't know how long this game could last. If I knew this game could take like a hundred episodes, like Changeling did, I could possibly get away with, okay, well, this arc is the spirit arc. This arc is the Sawan arc. This arc is the Takata arc. And because I know that these players are very good at being contributing contributing to each other's stuff but since i didn't know how long this game would last um and since i suspected that it might not be a, a 100 episode thing i started thinking very early on not day one but like episode th- three or four i started being like how can i tie all of it together in a way that then um if this ends in 10 episodes because again no idea um will everybody feel like they still got to have some part of their character because the one thing i don't want we we have been a very good group about saying like if somebody isn't feeling it Mm. they can raise the 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 question we probably aren't going to immediately stop based on one person being like i don't know but like we definitely start like okay we'll see if we can make it better and if we can't we'll end it's what happened with star wars reach was me i was like i'm not i'm not feeling it um i i suspect if we had kept going for longer it would have eventually caught on to other players because an unhappy storyteller is a pretty good indicator of a game kind of going but um i didn't know whether that was going to come up so i i definitely started thinking early on as to that because i didn't want even if the campaign ends because of players like i don't want to play anymore i don't want somebody's memories of a campaign being oh right that was the one where we all did what kate wanted and nothing <laughs> it didn't get to me. my plot yeah, get to my plot. Yeah, that's, that's, that's not satisfying i don't think a game has to be long to be satisfying this mm-hmm. game was 22 episodes i felt like i had a great time oh, yeah. i felt like i'm done mm-hmm. with with that like Sorry. the plot ended i'm happy so it's not like like relationships you can have a relationship that lasts one day and it can be perfect for what it was a summer fling great 50 years great but i never want something to feel so one-sided so i i specifically tried early on to figure out how can i make this involve all three um because i wasn't sure how long it was and i was correct 
that we weren't going to take this for 50 episodes or 60 or 100. Yeah. And we had discussed that as a possibility because of the way XP progression worked and, uh, you know, in terms of what else we were interested in exploring. Yeah. Uh, which ties into Kung Fu Fender Assassin. There was a lot of moving parts in the entire plot. Was the plot designed as an edge of the seat of the uh, edge of the pan situation, or did John know the details beforehand? I knew a bunch of the details, and I was I, I never commit. Uh, it's how it's why I'm so great at relationships. Hey. Um, oh shit! Oh, <laughs> oh shit! Oh shit! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> uh, in the bathroom. Uh. <laughs> I, oh, that's funny. They, I, I, I took my ring off to, to use a cleaning solution. It's not. Anyway, <laughs> don't don't we're panic. Good. Um, we're good. But <laughs> put my cards in a slightly different place, and I was like, oh no. Oh. <laughs> um, I I never commit because I never want to find out that something's not working and then just hold on to it doggedly. It's not fun. I don't think. Uh, because if everybody, if like for instance, let's say that all three of you were like, we just don't want to go into the spirit realm. I mean, weird for Liz to make that decision. But if you were like, no, we all just want to go <laughs> hang out in the Earth Kingdom all day, then if I'm like, but the stories, no good. No. Right? So oh, you can try to make you know your story interesting enough for them to go down the paths that you're thinking about them going down. But you have to be open to what the players want. Yeah. Speaking of players, at what point did the entire conspiracy start to make sense for you? Uh, there was a conspiracy. What? Oops. Got it. Yeah. Um, make sense is an interesting term here because I feel like I feel like I had a a handle sort of maybe halfway through the campaign on the major kind of parts. Okay, this person is pulling a lot of strings all over the world to do X. Now, I will say the X, i.e. like, what is Takata trying to accomplish? What was Tatik trying to accomplish? Like those things were actually like big question marks for me uh, for a long time. You know, and, and to a certain extent, I feel like I went into a lot of sessions being like, okay, I have two big actions prepared. If I feel like Takata's doing it for this reason, I'm gonna hit her with this. But if I feel like, she's, you know what I mean? And, and yeah. because I wasn't sure. And uh, if someone's, this has happened in many role-playing games and it can be a great gotcha moment, but like you assume that the villain's doing it for one reason. So you're like, I'm gonna hit him with a side of care. And they're like, ha ha, I'm a sociopath, <laughs> you know, or whatever. <laughs> like, well, I don't care about your, you know, yeah, it would be yeah. bad news. <laughs> Well, yeah, like it, it, it's good. true that without without fully knowing Takata's motives, was was her motive to get revenge on the spirit world, or specifically Ko, and then extending that to the entire spirit world because of what Ko did to her fiance, or was it because she was power hungry and greedy, well, hungry, yeah, or was it exactly. a combination of the two? So, like, you kind of feel better about doing certain gotcha gotcha takedowns if somebody is just much more of a despicable character but if they have that emotional involvement mm -hmm. like so many of your npcs are so well developed you're like i want to do that nickelodeon like take you down baddie but oh no character complexity and death damn it no <laughs> so no we're locking this guy up for 100 years you, you do <laughs> like your your uh villain heel turns That's right true. or face turns i should yeah, say yeah, yeah you you also funnily enough you like crushing on your villains sometimes depends yeah. on who they are yeah but takata was not designed no. to be one i mean the voice right off the immediately we like, were all like oh, the, oh, oh. i don't know who they are they i remember speaking, this yeah we're like yeah. no so we've coded this voice yes yeah. Like, yeah. yeah absolutely yeah. Have. absolutely yeah. Uh, <laughs> did the Null Island have a deep, dark village secret like a cellar full of pickled shipwrecked people's eyeballs Ugh. is that a total hidden horror vibe uh the blank was designed as a place to show that like fucky shit could happen if you didn't respect spirits mm. if you had spent longer on there then that would have become more and more clear but it was it's basically a place to say like this is a place where spiritual energy is not correct and yeah. the people from the water tribes who were visiting and, and experiencing that were learning about it but there's a reason that they were like we don't stay here for too long Right? There's no permanent population here because it's just not right. And it was intended as if we needed to, the players never needed it, but if I needed to push you a little further on like, 
it's bad to like fuck up a spirit world i would have been like look what happens there mm, nice yeah makes sense uh so that's what that was designed oh, for oh okay initially like yeah initially, that's yeah. that's really interesting no because i just i in the moment it felt like oh this is this is a look at another world a world that you can't stay in long because it's devoid of spirits but just like how humans should not stay too long in the spirit world like it was just i got the idea that either extreme is bad mm -hmm. like it was driving home the balance, like I balance. Was in the spirit realm. yeah but he was at the end of his life yes. like to me that's a big thing retiring to the spirit world and being like this is how i'm gonna end my days yeah. like frodo going to um the the gray uh, haven yeah it's 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 that same thing. It's not like a, I'm gonna go spend three months in the spirit world and then come back. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know? it's like, there <laughs> were there were definitely <laughs> reasons why I wanted, after meeting her. I wanted to imply also, there were reasons to go to this place that wasn't just like, what a horrible place. This is the worst place in the world, but just- I wish I could leave, right. yeah. Like, we can experience an extreme for a little bit, but not for too long. Mm. To do so is an issue. Um, and yeah, I, I do think that if somebody goes into the spirit realm, and they just decide like no this is where i'm going to live from now on i don't think that necessarily means that they'd be like irredeemable or or like they'd be completely fucked i do think however that making that decision is a life-changing and and i don't mean life is in like the course of my life i mean like physically your life changes uh stead too long in the spirit realm and i don't think you can leave yeah mm -hmm. right? it's not like having a house in the hamptons no <laughs> you know it's like <laughs> oh i just never want to go home yeah <laughs> oh, no. The Mondays, am I right? Uh, <laughs> at what point did the storyteller know that colonization was going to be part of the plot? From the start. That was something that I, I knew from the beginning. And um, we were talking about the different eras when we were trying to decide, and the book does give themes about each era, potential like little things that your campaign could sort of deal with. And I feel like we did sort of talk about which of those from the many different eras seemed good or yeah, bad spoke to us. To us. Like, yeah. definitely not this, maybe this, maybe that, maybe the other thing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think that came up as one of the... Yeah. yeah. That's fair. Uh, speaking of the blank, what was the source of the fake corpses? It was Ko. Uh, <laughs> Ko basically trying to manipulate. Mm -hmm. uh, why did Takata make Bashira and Kandan bomb the thing too? This may have been all, um, already been explained, but I don't fully get it. Was it just to make Varric look bad, or was Don also a target? What about Go? He was locked up in a suite by Bashir and Kandan. Was he a specific target? So a lot of questions. The, the <laughs> correct answer, yeah, Ellie Spot goes hard on the question. Ah. I'm, I'm glad oh, for it. That's fantastic. Uh, it's, it's actually as simple as this. She wanted a reason to make spirits look bad, mm -hmm. which is why it was spirit vine energy that exploded the ship. She was framing spirits. Uh, it was planned before Don was ever supposed to make it onto the ship, so no, it had mm -hmm. nothing to do with it. Uh, it had nothing to do with Go or even... Um, the only thing is, for Varric, it might have been a way to get Varric on her side. Oh. Because like, he cause he cares about his material possessions, yeah. right? Like it's... Although Varric is too water tribe. To, and he also, he knows Spirit Vine. He was the one who developed the technology mm -hmm, originally. Mm -hmm. So he wouldn't fuck with it. Mm -hmm. But um, very specifically, it's uh, look how many, like look what problems the spirits are causing so that at some point after the colonization happened uh, she could then say well now we have to take the fight to them mm. because they're clearly attacking us so why was go locked up yeah go because he wasn't part of the mutiny um, and had more power to potentially stop it so that they locked him in his so he like he knew too much maybe he he would have been able to potentially sway Mm -hmm. uh, crew members who were part of it to mm -hmm. to like go against it. Um, he essentially he had too much power to be trusted. Similar to if they had known that you three would have stopped it, they would have probably tried to lock you away as well. Mm. So gotcha, gotcha. Uh, let's have a look at this weirdness. Are there any moments where one path was taken over another that you're curious about where the alternative would have led? We're talking about life. <laughs> We're talking about the game. Uh, so, whoa, whoa, hey, look, I don't know. Yeah, in an alternate universe, Scott and I. I'm pretty sure it's present in this time. universe. <laughs> True. <laughs> there is no alternate to be had. Hey. hey. Uh, the spirit, spirit finds in the backpacks in the spirit world, that was Tatik. 
yeah. the path was taken where you're yeah. supposed to where the alternative is. I mean, I feel like every time we make a choice between A and B, I wonder what the other path would have been. Mm -hmm. But I don't think there are any big ones that have stuck with me. A lot of things, like, there were a lot of sort of, you know, big defining moments mm -hmm. ne right near the end of the campaign, right? So I don't question, like, I what if we had trusted Tatik? What, what if, if we had told Tenzin? What oh, shit, yeah, that's if young actually, Sue that had, is, that had is confided huge. in Tenzin. That does feel. If you had confided in Tenzin, I'm not sure tons would have changed, because we were also close to the end game at that point. Um, Tenzin, I, I plan to basically have Tenzin, if, if you had told him to be ready to support you, but I'm like, my hands are tied until I have proof. That's um, kind of... What if we hadn't run? What if we hadn't left Republic City and you had basically turned yourself over and, and gone to jail? Or well, or fact, refused no, to be the, the first colonist. The part, and, yeah, that, that was it. The the reason of, yeah, the reason we were leaving is because the ultimatum was, mm -hmm. be the first colonist or or jail. Dot dot dot. Yeah, well, jail. Or or least to yeah. die, the question probably. I would have asked, which Ellie's about to ask here, what if Young Su had tried to kill Takata? Uh, I, I honestly wonder whether I could have succeeded. Like, I know she's not like you know a demigod or whatever, but like, I might be. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> I bought one. That is huge. <laughs> I have one at home, yeah. The demigod at home. It's Jorick, yeah. Uh, I don't, yeah. I don't know. That's because I, I gave it's, you it's a specific curious. thing. I gave you the option to kill her on the airship. Mm -hmm. As well, that's right, yeah. I, I knew you weren't going to. Okay. I, I, look, <laughs> my a, goal is to surprise you now. There's a certain point. Yep, that's fair. And I, I, if you had, I wouldn't have been like, well, the game's over. <laughs> Yeah, did you imagine? Was that handing him my badge and my gun? No, that was, well, yeah. it was me just yeah. putting a gun on the table. Oh. a hammer. <laughs> You'll need this. You'll need You're going to need that. <laughs> I, 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 I can anticipate some things, but I think I, I think giving you the choice was interesting, even though I pretty much yeah, no, had like fair. a, there's a 95% chance that Scott's not going to do this here. But um, despite all our innuendos, we were still kind of like splashing around in the Nickelodeon pool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That, I mean, I know that really dark shit happens, but like... It's hashtag war crime cartoon. But know? it's usually the That's antagonists that do the really, really dark shit. Yeah. I feel like if one of the PCs had done that, that would have been a thing. Ooh, that's just like, imagine no. Young Su going back to like the state room and being like, I had to. She was too dangerous to be kept alive. <laughs> like, that would be like, yep, I don't know I agree, if I'm that interested but... in you anymore, although you are dangerous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I'm sworn to take you down, and I'll... Hmm. Can we pretend you told me this 30 minutes in the future? <laughs> Everyone else has to go. <laughs> 30 minutes? There's a lot I can get done in 30 minutes. The Crosser asks, With so many games and so little time, do you think you'll come back to Avatar on stream? Never say never at all, but does this game crack the top three return games? That is a good question as well. I would consider a micro campaign, a pre a predetermined kind of like uh, Blades in the Dark, like a five episode, six episode mini thing. If we were between two bigger games and we needed to learn a system and we needed to buy some time, I think going into it with those expectations could be interesting mm -hmm. just for myself. Yeah, I feel like we, if we had a concept, now that we know roughly how long, like the, now that we know what the crunch is and the arc and the mechanics and stuff, I don't hate them. This wasn't miserable to play. It's <laughs> that, not like, good. I don't love the combat, but I don't, it, I wouldn't be mad to go back to this, this system in that way. A mini campaign might be a fun yeah. plan. Yeah. yeah. If we like specifically just be like, do we have another story that we want to tell in the universe? Yeah. And just I, a Pro benders on the circuit. Look, I mean, Honestly, uh, no. so that's going to be the next mini campaign. Is well, like the three of you will play pro bender. No combat, just bending. Just sports. Just pro bending. Ex sports. sports! Exclamation mark. We have mark. to save sports. Yes. yes. <laughs> we need to wait for the next next um, series to come out and see what that setting is oh. like, and set a game in that and setting. Breaking. Yeah. <laughs> Breaking the law. Breaking the law. <laughs> Oh yeah, there is a pro bending subsystem in the New Republic City source book, which I don't have and haven't read. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as a palate cleanser game, yeah, this this could be fun. Especially, I think it might lend itself well to a, a smaller game because then you can kind of go hard, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Because that 
it's there's always a like yeah go hard it's fine but then there's always this sort of like but what if i die and then of course you can't die in this game no um but yeah. there is a certain amount of like but i don't want to mess things up too much and mm -hmm. maybe you do maybe, maybe you, you do, do. <laughs> uh here's another ellie spot question how do you feel about your character's romantic story arcs Everyone just looks at Scott. Oh, no, I think that's the other thing. Uh, I, I feel like, well, I feel like it all came out in the wash, is how I feel about Young Sue's <laughs> romance. <laughs> what way to describe it? Uh, no, it's just very good, Aragorn. Um, someone write that. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Thank you, Kate. Uh, Aragorn, we're, we'll approach you about compensating you for this. Uh, no, like, I think I, think I was very confused. Throughout the majority of oh, the Wait, you or Young Su? Oh, uh, oh, Young Su. Yeah. Young Su. I mean, no. Young Su. No, I just feel like, for whatever reason, I didn't click with Young Su and romancing the NPCs in this campaign for a good part of the arc. So the arc felt like, to me, oh, there's something taking off here. But, like, I'm really just focused on vengeance right now, man. You know, like, and, and so. Uh, how do I feel about it? I feel like it turned out well and it made sense to me that Young Su found a connection with someone uh, and they, you know, they managed to like take that connection into the future. Yes, I enjoyed connection very much. Oh, it was very good. As did he. <laughs> but like, our, um, but in the midst of it, I mean, I mean, pretty famously, I think uh, Young Su went off the, went off. He, he lost his balance because of having to attempt to reveal feelings and not really be sure how to do that and like try it at the wrong time and like, you know. So yeah, I'm gonna say um, confusion. Interesting. Uh, for me, um, Don, Don was like attracted to Jai from the beginning, and she was purposely trying to keep a bit of a distance because she just assumed that their lives would take them in different directions. So she was like, we'll date, we'll kiss, we'll bang, and it'll be great. Um, and then we'll go our separate ways. But then he went with them to Kiyoshi Island and that kind of blew her mind because she had never left her public city to her uh, knowledge. And uh, the fact that he was going with them, she was like, I, this is new territory and I'm not used to it. Uh, she was used to very casual stuff with like tourists up to this point, people she would never see again. Um, so he went with them and then things kind of like they went on a date and it was great, but then things got messy because just as expected, they were getting pulled in two different directions. And then things got really messy and they were yelling at each other and they weren't trusting each other. Um, I was genuinely convinced that they were going to break up. Um, and then Jai made that choice in the spirit world uh, to like have the army surrender and to buy them time. And then like everything shifted and their interests yeah, suddenly, yeah, their interests suddenly aligned. And like, who knows if they're together long-term, but the fact that they were like, willing to to try and make it work because they cared so deeply about each other was like really great yeah so it was like it was probably the messiest pc npc like romance that i've played on stream but that was like fun in and of itself so, yeah. yeah i was trying to figure out where Bo felt about various npcs um and they didn't they didn't entirely trust now because now was too good at what they do, what she does, that Bao wasn't ready to trust. Even even down, like maybe even especially down, locked in the dungeon together, Bao was like, mm, no, I can't, I can't trust that you're not actually like a triple agent. Um, you're too good. I can't open myself up to this. But then after everything was said and done and now was still there and not having turned coat and stabbed everyone in the back or whatever, which, you know, <laughs> for a bounty hunter, maybe my family has a bounty on me and you're going to, you can't see me. You're going to turn me in. Oh, oh dear. You know, you're going to turn, turn me into my family and get rich. Like, I don't know. Um, so I, uh, yeah. 
I don't know. Uh, feeling the vibes. I like that because from the beginning, we were pretty sure we could trust Tatik. And now was the one that we were unsure about, but now was steadfastly on our side from the beginning. She never wavered. Mm -hmm. And then Tatik was the one who was all over the place. Yep. Um, so that was really cool. Like, we were so unsure about now for many, many episodes. Even, like, Jai, by the end, there was still all the shit we hadn't told him. Mm -hmm. We just hadn't played it out. It's, yeah. I assume we would have told him a great yeah. deal afterwards. Wait, what are you but... talking about? Oh. <laughs> but, yeah. It's, yeah. And then, yeah. Now it was just, like... So the, the romanceable characters in here, I will say that the option was open... For, there was only one that was closed, which was uh, Jai Bao. Oh, sure. Yeah. Because I they mean, were should hope so. We yes. could have established that they were like non blood connected or whatever. They like could have been their targeted. their parents were like connected through marriage or whatever. Yeah. So, like, yeah. but, uh, but, but like about. Nah. Jai Young Su was also yeah a possibility. Mm -hmm. Sure. You know wouldn't have been a jock game if it wasn't. Mm -mm. That's a good point. I feel like I feel like Young Su expressed interest in all sorts of people throughout the campaign. Just kind Yes, of... and also not people. Why do you carry your staff around on your back? Easier to carry it inside nature's pocket. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like a kangaroo. <laughs> not that pocket. Oh. So, more questions. I feel like we've answered so much. This yeah. is great. We have. Did you guys know going into this was asked uh this immediately was asked immediately after. After. did you guys know going into this session it was going to be you the last one of your campaign or was this something that you decided organically as the story evolved into that point i mean i'm happy to answer since no one else is talking yeah. um we just that we <laughs> we uh spoke we were t we were in conversation about approaching the end and feeling like okay we feel like we've got this many sessions left and let's look at the calendar what's going on with our lives when should we aim for um but we weren't sure and we actually that before the session last week we were like okay we're probably gonna need two full episodes so if we need the entirety of the second episode do we want to do our froyo on a thursday blah 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 so no we didn't in we weren't planning for it to end that day but it played out well very yeah. i think as was pointed out well as pointed out we discussed immediately following the session as well over dinner how kind of natural and, and right things felt and how kind of quickly a lot of things moved and and we just went oh yeah no this is like of course we're going to move to this point in the story now and this is making sense yeah and things like, were just falling into place yeah worked out well i so i one thing that i had been thinking of very specifically was a lot of the stuff that was happening especially with the takata situation and young su was that young su was going for an evidence-based takedown as opposed to like i'll you know punch her in in the throat and super hard yeah and super hard uh and what i didn't want to do was to have him present the evidence and then for it not to be enough mm. because the group had gone to a lot of effort to secure testimony from people and to gather up all the information that they needed in order to take her down and i i find that it it's it would have sucked if they had spent six episodes doing this. And then in the end, it was like, nope, she just got into a big fucking mech and then started wrecking the city. And so now you have to take her out that way. Like they'd already accomplished the goals. And that's when I sort of realized maybe the story can wrap now as opposed to next week because you had accomplished everything and I didn't want to take that away. Right. There's, if I had been dropping hints earlier on that Takata was some kind of combat monster and that like you knew that she wouldn't go quietly mm -hmm. and so you'd have to publicly denounce her and then kick her ass, yeah, maybe that would have worked. But I don't know. Didn't feel it. I just had this image of us like presenting all this information to Takata and then John turning to us and being like, ah, but you didn't get the sea prunes from the vendor in episode two. And much like in King's Quest VI, you've now ruined the entire game for yourselves. Like, oh, here today, gone tomorrow. Oh, you know, like, um, yeah, yeah, exactly, right? You, yeah, we, we, we felt like we had done enough and the story felt like it was working. And it was very, uh, to, to tack on to what John said about, like, we really had no idea that Takata was a combat monster. 
Um, because even Wait, when she... Young Su confronted her in her office, I think you made a role that was something like, who was the biggest threat yeah. in this instance? And it wasn't Takata that was pinged, it was, it was the, the guard, guard outside. outside. Yes, and so we were that. like, oh, she's probably not a bender then because I think, I'm pretty sure the officer isn't a bender. So I think we got, we somehow deluded ourselves into thinking that she wasn't a threat combat wise. Mm -hmm. She wasn't really. Mm -hmm. oh, she probably could have kicked well, someone's the, ass. So the she weird thing is that in in the in the system, you there are different like roles. Are is somebody a nemesis? Are they a rival? Are they? Mm, that's right. And so she was a nemesis because she had to be in terms of how difficult. So technically in combat, yeah, I guess. Mm -hmm. But like she wasn't intended to be a combat focused character at all. Okay. Um, she was a firebender. Mm -hmm. But if I had decided episode four, like, okay, I got to kick her ass, then then I think that would have been a bigger... The thing is that according question. to the system, and again, system, right? According to the system, she would have been difficult to take down just because by her nature, she has like, you know, eight fatigue and right. seven conditions that she has to close Based out. Her role, essentially. Although she probably wouldn't have been continually trying to hurt you. She would have been trying to defend herself to the point where then you wouldn't have been able to attack because now the entire city guard is showing up to mm -hmm. take you down or whatever. Um, so there is that, is that the system kind of doesn't, like the system implies, no, 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 this character has to be this strong, mm. even if they're not about combat, because otherwise you would have been able to take her down by causing her fatigue in other ways, right? Right, right, so, right. Um, Interesting. So there's there's that there's a little bit of uh that going on i like what ellie spot said about uh bow and young suit needing to do like yeah. self-discovery before that's very insightful i i, I really did bad. enjoy the fact that both characters didn't immediately hop into something for a good reason uh, it's not that i'm against romance in a game or against famously well, not. Famous. <laughs> or like even against somebody like latching onto somebody and like trying something out like right at the start because also you had made it clear that bow not bow don was somebody who you know would have flings mm -hmm. here and there um that you know the the order didn't necessarily like smile upon but they also didn't expressly she was very good at, at climbing the ivy to right visiting tourists rooms we didn't really get into that <laughs> right but oh yeah I, right yeah. so like i'm not against that but i also right. The thing that I don't like is when somebody is like, oh, well, I'm going to hop into a romance and then I'm immediately going to treat it as like, this romance is the only thing that I care about. And I'm like, we've been playing for 20 minutes. Like, no. damn. And we didn't talk about this before. So how does it matter that much to you now? You know, like, that, like, that's not even necessarily a bad thing, but it's, it's just something that I don't mm. prefer. I don't prefer somebody to be like, oh, I've just decided that these two characters are going to hook up and they're going to be like true love forever. Mm -hmm. right and after right, 20 right, minutes right. of play right like that's that's less what i'm more what i'm going for but i also equally don't like it when somebody is like well i want to be a character who's like interested in romance but i'm also just for some reason always going to be like i can't be with anybody mm. well why not i'm mm. just brooding a lot is that enough of a reason like i need more than that and i need to grow up is a very good reason yeah i trying to be an edgelord is a pretty shitty reason because then then my characters would immediately be like i don't know if i'm interested in you anymore oh no, that's yeah yeah there it is it's true mm -hmm. uh requiem loss asks what were the highs and lows of the system in your opinion what mechanics did you enjoy and what mechanics did you care less for i feel like we've covered this mm -hmm. quite a bit the combat is not great uh the playbooks are okay if you like playbooks the prologue is fantastic um, I like the concept of balance. It's it's thematically very important yeah, the in the game, so I understand. But it's implemented well. It's it's yep. a cool way of doing it. Uh, I would argue. Yeah, bro, is a good enough reason? <laughs> it's all right, Aragorn. He didn't know that my name started with a K, so there was uh, some confusion there. I mean, Scott did end up with Kaiming. <laughs> Yeah, this um, da, na, na, this na, came na. up in conversation the other day, and I I had to really Elizabeth like shake myself and and be like, no, it's not, it's well, not a, it's not a real curse. I was doing like a curse mocking scenario, no, and I named someone Clavada. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where that came from. Him. Yeah, anyway, yeah, Clava Clavada. It was <laughs> quite wild. Do you want to do a little role playing in the bedroom? Sure, but can I pick the name? <laughs> 
<laughs> Wear this name tag. <laughs> no, no problem, Requiem. It's just, well, you, you can check the bot. But yeah. I, just, I did want to mention the curse. The curse. Yeah, it's the weird. Man. How much did Takata know about Don? How much did she care? It's a really good question. Uh, Takata did not make the link between <gasps> she didn't the adult know. and the kid. No. No shit. Know. Wow. I thought that's why she wanted to speak to Don privately on the airship. Nope. Ah, look at that. There you go. No, it was Jeez, like that was style. that was a oh, like your flair. I, I wanted to put some interleaving, like interweaving between those the stories, but I, Takata's Takata was Scott's character's nemesis, and the thing that and we actually discussed this um, off screen. The thing that I didn't want more than anything else was for all of a sudden Takata to be more of a problem for Don than for Young Soo, mm. for it to be more of uh, Don's story, because that basically be like oh that was a nice idea that you had but i'm just gonna give it to somebody else thanks yeah and for my part i didn't want don because i knew that like the whole she had been left by her parents to the order was a thing present in her backstory but it was really important to me that that not become her whole arc in this campaign mm. uh john was like do, do you care that she's like is she looking for them you know do you want her to find them and i was like if we go through the whole campaign and she never finds them that is fine for me because it's it's present in everything that she does, but it's not. I don't want it to be her driving force. So when this twist with Takata was introduced, we had a really good conversation about like not making that the crux of Don's story now, just because the truth is known. Yeah. Um, I think we walked that line really well. It was cool. Did the ten stamps for free food ticket from the um, harbor food stall survive the shipwreck at all? So in other words, did one of the characters have the drive to keep the ticket and fill it? I'm sure we did not. I I wonder if it survived the shipwreck, but I do. Now it's now it's coming back to me that the sea prune vendor was just like buy ten get one free or whatever it was, and we were like okay. Cool. Barely anything survived the shipwreck. Yeah, we basically we just didn't had go our back clothes, to our room to grab our shit. Oh. We had our clothes and our weapons. Oh, you, they're yeah. shopping at people. Like, they That's back, right. but They didn't, like, take it you onto the lifeboat. That's why right. we were all wearing Jai's clothes for many episodes later. Or were we all wearing Jai's clothes? We were all <laughs> okay, Mr. Shirtless. Hey. Yeah, I was wearing his <laughs> lack of top. <laughs> In the coconut cup. All right. You oh know, I... Oh, my God. I, have we gotten through a whole bunch of these questions here? Uh, covered, covered... Covered. Yeah, he was a covered. Guy. Do you think this being the Avatar world helps or hinders the system it's built on? I would presume that they. I mean, yeah, I, I don't know if I can speak to that, but I, I imagine that went hand in hand in the designing of the game, right? Like, I would. I, I know. I know the the impetus was like, let's do it powered by the apocalypse in the Avatar world, but like, I have to assume that they go together. It felt right. It felt the mechanics didn't feel so dark and broody and scary mm -hmm. that they wouldn't work in the Avatar world. So yeah, there you, yeah, that's how I feel about that. Oh, and you can do anything with bending. Yeah, I which is also very yeah, Avatar. Yeah. What was the Sea Prune Stew vendor having more of an Earth Kingdom name? He was from the Earth Kingdom. <gasps> Shocker! You're allowed to make cuisine that isn't your home nation. What? What? Thing. I know, right? Oh God, I need to stop. Okay. Uh, what mechanic or feature from Avatar would be would we be most interested to reuse in future games? It's prologue. Prologue. Yeah. yeah. The way they the way they um, kind of structure it. Out. Yeah, structure it for for you essentially. Yeah. Thanks. Oh my God. Fenris has a borderline. Last question and dumb borderline question. dumb. You're allowed to make poutine, Flower of August. Do yes, it. You are. We won't insist on anything, but, but I will. Please take a photo and share. Yes. Yes. yes I. I think we all have pretty strong opinions <laughs> on what makes a good one, though, so... But we won't judge you. No, 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 out. but just, like, want... reach out if you have questions. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not the kind of person who's, like, if Birds, you yeah. if you don't do it exactly this way, that it's, like, you can be inspired by other things. Just know that if you take mozzarella cheese and you put it on fries and then you hand it to somebody, that doesn't... Like, to me, I wouldn't say, oh, that's poutine. I'd say that's cheese, cheese on fries. fries. 
well, adjacent. Specifically, if I see someone get something from a restaurant, I will absolutely judge the fuck out of it. <laughs> but if someone's trying to make it at home, especially in somewhere where they can't access curds, like, fucking do do what makes you happy. I, Swedish I anticipated gravy. this question. What is, and what is Finnish coffee cheese? That at least That's what Crosshair puts in his coffee. Yeah. Why was it the Southern Water Tribe that were the spirit police when they are more industrialist Veriki compared to the North, who are supposed to be the hardliner spiritual people? I uh, okay. We need the million dollar question music, I think, here. <laughs> <laughs> if I had it here. Yeah, I'll you'd be like right away, yeah, here. for sure. Uh, I think it's pretty clear that both tribes are still spiritually connected. Um, that it's not just the Northern Water Tribe that is. Uh, but I will point out that Tatik was willing to do things like uh, betray trusts, blow things up, fake his own death. Like He was willing to go hard and his, his goal quite literally was, I want to protect the spirit realm. That's all he wanted to do. Whereas the Southern Water Tribe was also like, someone's impersonating us and I, we don't like that. And also somebody is potentially taking advantage of a thing that, you know, like we have one of the portals, mm -hmm. right? Like both water tribes control one of the spirit portals. The other one is in Republic City, the new one. So it's not like they don't care. You can make the claim that I could have reversed the two and that would have made a bit more sense. Sure. Um, I'm not terribly upset that I deviated slightly from established canon. Yeah. That's my answer. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there. Oh my god. Bye. Yay. I mean, I feel like. Uh, those are the questions. Great. I feel hey, like. We covered a lot of ground. Yeah. 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 Um, I was a little worried. I felt oh, like it went on too long. Can I ask? Can I ask a question of the people at the table? Sure. A quick one. Mm. If something jumps to you right away, great. And if not, whatever. Favorite moments, moments that you will think about in the future as like that was a highlight of Avatar: Legend: The Mirror Scale for me. The fact that you went home with the strong woman. With the strong woman. Hell yeah! <laughs> I, I was just because I was there, and I'm like, what is? You're not. What? Okay. What is happening? Oh, all right. I was I, that was definitely a moment where I was Strong like, oh boy. Stuff. Fuck, okay. Um The problem is that Kate's ass moments are so good. Mm. Oh, Kate's ass. I was Kate's like, ass. Kate's ass, ass, ass moments. moments. <laughs> <laughs> um, there were a few times where I feel like uh, but like this happens every campaign that gets a little steam ahead of it where Kate just stands up and just drops some fucking bombs. <gasps> Um, <laughs> wow. Damn. Back bot, bot's getting into it. Bot's getting into it. Uh, I think for me, my favorite Don moment was the date. Mm. Um, because I think there were still definite questions about Jai at the time. But there was still like a is he a good guy or is he against us or like and you were like no i'm just gonna go for it and then it wasn't about you sussing out whether or not he was on your side or not you weren't like dangling you're like well we can go on a date but you have to tell me are you actually evil or not <laughs> right which is i don't know why this is happening but this is my happening. next character concept clearly <laughs> um oh yeah there you go dangly hands <laughs> old dangly hands mcgee <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I, I I really did appreciate that, but also the like the this you're feeling wronged afterwards mm. is the other part. Like the day went really well, and then when he didn't join you immediately, when he was like, "I've got I got shit that I gotta do, I got orders," and there was this sort of like you were willing to go as far as like, "Yeah, okay, I am going to have a." a broken heart about this as opposed to just like oh but he's perfect and he was my otp so you know i'll just be there for you when you get back oh, yeah oh, yeah. So. Uh, yeah i think she had been that person in republic city and then as soon as she left she's like everything's changed what do you mean you're not coming with me again like, <laughs> <laughs> i can do whatever yeah. i want that's it like yeah. her little her little mind was blown mm. yeah i i want to highlight um 
done getting so furious with Tatis at the end. Like, it was Yo. so good. So, it was so true to who the character was, but still surprising from the character who generally was cooperative and friendly and, like, that sort of, like, the, the not necessarily going all out like that and it was so earned and so correct but like thank you yeah. it timed out really well because like she had been I, I intentionally made her as somebody who's who's been raised to like keep tabs on her emotions and keep very like measured for the most part measured skewing positive mm -hmm. but then like she started getting angrier at people like Yating and Tatik especially at the end and at the same time, I had run out of things to level up on, so I was putting more points in passion, and it just worked. Like it, it like it works as an arc for her. Um, yeah, so it was, uh, I mean, I'm gonna say that I think that this this ending, this campaign ending, is gonna be in my brain as like textbook how to end a campaign. Like, yep. I, I just think that this is one of the best um, conclusions that we've ever done. We were all so on the same page. It mm -hmm. felt like each of us had really badass moments. And like, we were all in sync with you, John, and just everything like was tidied up. And we had like a lot of joy and celebration at the end. Um, I'm gonna look back on that last episode fondly for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have, a Keith Kachow. I have a question for chat. You don't have to answer no, but I'd like it to percolate. Um, very tech related. What about the overlay was awesome that you loved? What about it didn't work for you? And anything to do with our tech? Um, these microphones, we've generally heard, heard positive feedback. Let us know. Um, music volume music choice we never showed the clocks we never showed clocks but we had them available clocks. uh the maps stuff like that so um feel free to put them in chat now feel free to sit on it and think about it um throw it in our discord if you're watching on youtube hi youtube uh feel free to write a comment if you're wa listening on podcast obviously this doesn't really apply but do let us know about sound mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. thank you thank you oh, thanks at least pod yay damn uh, yeah, I wow. really do want to. I really do want to hear about that stuff as well, right? Like the yeah. the the tech is um, sometimes the color shift was so. In fact, the color shifts we can stop the color shift. Yeah, you can set it to a specific color. Uh, like I can set it to blue, and then it'll just go straight to blue, and then wow. it'll stay there. Or I can be no, I want purple, it's purple again. And no red, or I can make it go back to being a cycle. So like we do have that option. We were. Sure. That was an option in case we wanted to be like, well, we're in the Earth Kingdom right now, so we'll just leave it at, at green. Like Republic City Purple and all that. I feel like the way yeah. these stories tend to go, though, is you tend to be in the same place for a while. So, <laughs> you know. Uh, so mm. there, there's that as well. Uh, but I will say, uh, if you do have comments about the overlay, a really good place with them is in the Discord mm -hmm. because we may not catch it in chat and I don't want to forget. Yeah. Uh, that's great to hear Ellie Spot's comment about listening to it as a podcast because that where where all you can focus on is the audio. Mm -hmm. um, knowing that it was smooth. That's yeah. wonderful to hear. Uh, audio is consistently the number one issue that we've run into. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we don't have a person dedicated to monitoring our microphones and we aren't having large microphones in our mouths like you would for radio because we're also rolling dice yeah so trying to yeah play yeah i mean we could have just invested at one point in all of us having one of these puppies and then oh. just had it set up so that yeah. we're all speaking into the microphone like that but uh the other issue is that yeah typically uh people monitor yeah. sound live yeah if, if it's a fix live it if it's a live show they'll they'll monitor it live yeah. or they'll fix it all in post and we can't do either of those uh, well, we can't do one of them, and the other one we don't want to. Yeah, that's the ticket. Uh, boom mics, yeah. Look, if it comes to mics, <laughs> we've we've investigated them all. Shotgun mics, condenser mics, dynamic mics. We're also in mics, an apartment light building, so like there's ambient noise. So there are things that don't work that would work fine in the studio. Yeah, that's it. But which means that that mm -hmm. this solution, I, we're glad yeah. to hear that it's working yeah. because it's working for us. And like that's really double thumbs up. Yeah. Uh, Flower of August asks, do you have any particular character choices you would have done differently in retrospect? 
I'm going to answer this question not to be a negative Nancy, but I'm going to answer this question by saying, because I probably said something similar at the end of Riverwild, the choices I make for a character become the character. So I, it's not that I can't regret them, it's that I won't, because they are the character. Yeah. If I change my mind about something I did, then it stops being what the character actually is. Personal opinion. Gonna 100% copy-paste that answer for myself. Control C, control V. Yeah. I'm not sure you're happy with it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can't really like the the choices. If I regret a choice, it's probably a game regret, not a choice regret. Like I might be like, oh man, I regret this character not doing this because uh, it meant that people stopped having fun. Mm. But, like, that hasn't really happened. Uh, I don't. The my the main regret that I have, the main choice that I wish that I had done in this game is to highlight more interesting bending, which I didn't really do. But like, also, I don't regret that that much. Yeah, so. <laughs> exactly. Um, if you played again, what time period would you play? Well, clearly they're on the pro bending circuit. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Easy. I I love what I've read of, which is albeit very minimally, but like of the Kyoshi era. It sounds like a bit of a wild west in terms of mm -hmm. this world. Mm -hmm. There's not a, the law enforcement situation is very different. Everything's a bit more in flux there's room for criminal elements to come along and like pick up yeah. where government la leaves off it's cool yeah it's it sounds cool to me the um the hundred year war especially towards the end of it like during the events of of the last airbender would be really interesting too it gives me strong like exalted third solar vibes mm. like you are on the run you're incredibly powerful but if you let anyone know this incredibly powerful nation will be on you and it will like wipe you out Unless we're all or incarcerate you for the fire. that's it and so i think that that could be really <laughs> oh. interesting if we wanted those <laughs> those vibes again mm -hmm. yeah i think they could all be exciting um, yeah 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 totally um and and as we said this is a good candidate for a, a mini campaign right yeah like, Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. Like two or three sessions, max five. Like I could see that happening for sure. Um, convention. <laughs> on a convention. No, I can't. That's, uh, that's yeah. I can't imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> that's surprising. I liked it. <laughs> He's the one who showed me Galaxy Quest. Oh, yeah. uh, Gil asked, did you already decide what you're playing next? Do we wait until the end? Or is there anything else we need to cover? There are no other questions. Then I think let's... Uh... Do we have any other admin oh. to do related to this game? Uh, I want you to pull out your whiteboards. I have a couple of quick questions. Yay! Oh, hey. Before we get to this, but Gil, we will answer this question. Um, the answer is yes, we have, and we'll get to, the details. Get to it in a, in a bit. Um, so, <laughs> number one. Scott, for fuck's sake. Your, Sorry, char guys. your character, <laughs> yeah. this is just, just for your character here, uh, you can pick one established canon character in the Avatar universe to smash. Who is it? Oh in, my! As our character. As, as character. our character. I like how two of you are thinking it's just, just like, oh, I misjudged the amount of space I need. It's fine. How much are you writing? <laughs> oh, I'm not I'm writing in very big. I, I will ask after this. I will. I will ask for you personally. But. Uh, Smash is in boink, Ellie spot. Yeah. As in smash or pass. Right. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Jesus. This is clearly the meteor. Sword. Meteor sword. <laughs> meteor sword. <laughs> wow. Sword in my butt. Toots <laughs> wrote there. Oh, I wrote. My, oh, so oh, I wrote gosh. mine. Okay, I wrote my own name. Oh, that's <laughs> All right, three, two, one. I'm hoping you can. Sokka. Yeah. Avatar. I wrote Avatar God, Korra God, in yeah. big letters. <laughs> and Hell I yeah. saw me because they're both from privileged backgrounds. They're both into tech. Uh, they both have big influential powers. Also, a song is really hot. And then I have to ask That's for you personally, yeah. you as a player. You're just going to say same. same. You're not even going to bother. I'm not going to. Asami. It's also going to be Asami, yeah. honestly. 
I, I kind of she's can't so believe good. how appealing that character is to so many people. Yeah. So many yeah. she, she's so great at the beginning that I was convinced she was uh, she was an antagonist. Guy, yeah. I was like, you can't trust her. She's too perfect. Oh no, wait, she's just perfect. <laughs> oh, I see. She's so fucking competent yeah. and she's attractive. That's up. Yeah. That's up. It's fair. It's fair. Uh, as your character, if you weren't a, if you had to choose, oh, yeah. a, should we repeat the answers more slowly and clearly before? We... Okay, so yeah, go ahead. Sokka from Avatar: The Last Airbender. I think they would have had a lot of fun together. <laughs> nice, like like jokey, fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, no, no, it's but, yeah, I true. I wrote Avatar Korra. I don't really feel like I have to. Explain. She's she's <laughs> strong and she's awesome. Uh, yeah. I don't think I have to say more than that. Very hammer. It turns out I am Avatar. Korra. Oh yeah, I was in hiding this whole time. Oh wow. God damn. Good hiding. Uh, I put. I saw me. My brain just emptied of what I, names are leaving my brain today. Um, I saw me because uh, shared similar backgrounds and uh, technology. And and all right, you have to choose a different uh, style for your character. So either a different bending or tech or uh, uh, weapons. For this PC? For the, this PC. Let's see. So my writing is... Yes, Hammer is literally Korra's playbook. <laughs> Not everything. Okay. I love it. And go. Airbending. I wrote firebending a la Zuko. Water bending. Water bending. Yay. Power napping. These, I, yeah, these make sense. Yeah. Right? These are all okay. appropriate. Uh, if you, if you could kill any character in this game, but you cannot choose Takata, who would it be? Damn it. It's funny. Yeah, kill. Uh, are there consequences? It might be. You have to pick someone, though. Okay, I, I'm gonna need a minute. Mm -hmm. okay. It's a tough question. Yeah. A tough question, specifically. Nobody took took heart bending. I mean, wang bending. Wang bending. <laughs> Sorry. FMK NPC go. Basically. We do love that sort of thing here, Ellie Spot. I'm sure you know. I feel like at some point in the campaign there was like, man, it would be easy if I just killed them. Um, oh. No, it's fine. You can, I wrote this already. <laughs> I wrote this already. No, no, it's fine. I like how Liz has to know. She's like, I'm not she waiting got, to force She got to know. She's too impatient. Absolutely correct, yeah. Impatient? Well. <laughs> Pick each other. Did you get Bonus points for that? Yeah. I put them in wits. Oh, good. Yeah, good. That's smart. Yeah. I put them in limericks. <laughs> <laughs> expression two, expression four. Specialty limericks. <laughs> One day you'll build yourself as a PC. Oh, no, I don't amazing. want that. I don't I want know. to see it. I don't know. I've got nothing useful. So that's, that's okay. No, it's good. Go for it. <laughs> right. So, Tatik? Yeah. Why Tatik? I could see Don killing him in a moment of anger i could see her sure. getting so angry with him and if he's if he said something like i'm i will fight you to stop you or something she she would probably just lose her shit be like okay pocket that's sand. it that's it push you into ko's lair he's the one i could most see her just like getting really angry and killing him mm. yeah. yeah okay uh i picked bashira which I yeah. I don't know like I mean I I don't think I, I, change, yeah. as was as was revealed later I don't think Bashira was you know evil or anything but I can see within the context of the story Young Su saying you've done a very bad thing you know and then being like no redemption for you to, to be fair she did do a very bad thing sure I, I well no in character right because like yeah. I, you know obviously I believe in restorative justice you also wrote bashira uh no i i would have ch revised it to zen t but i realized we like now and bow effectively dumped 
send T's dead body into the ocean. So she said that counts. <laughs> uh, so I wrote Chew. Um, Chew. I don't know. Chew. Yeah, but I obviously but then who that would, would have taught that would be, Well, that's exactly <laughs> that is without oh, no. Bao knowing about the value that he eventually paid off. It's more like in the moment or in oh or yeah in the opportunity value. All right, and then the last question is: of the three of you, which one of you would have made the best avatar? Can I? Can I? No, no. I'm just gonna write it. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna ask you to specify. You are allowed to say yourself, by the way. And no one picked Ko. I don't know, man. Ko's I don't. I do not want to fuck with the spirit world that way. Ko just steals faces. I do like, yeah. In the show, when they introduce the concept, they're like, "What are you gonna do?" <laughs> They're like, yeah, no, it's a thing that exists. It's horrible. Guess that's that. You know, like, it's interesting. Oh, weirdness. Weirdness. This is this is what I wanted to ask. This is true. Ocean. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. One. Three, two, one. Bow. I wrote Don. Young Sue. Oh okay. shit. Hey. You want to explain? Wanna, your yeah, I would love to talk about. I this. think Bow would be the best at giving the impression that they were fully politically neutral. Um, which everyone is always uh, uh, attacking the Avatar for. They're like, oh, you're showing preference, you're showing favoritism. I think Bao could do the best at playing the political game, which is usually where the Avatar sucks. <laughs> right, because they tend, well, the, the two Avatars we've met have been very passionate people, yeah. right? Um, I chose Don because I felt like the the idea of being a seeker of knowledge felt very appropriate for an Avatar. To me, I also personally think, from a Nickelodeon cartoon perspective, it's very funny to have the Avatar be like, "I don't want to go to Avatar practice. I want to sneak off and smooch people." Like, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's cute and funny to me. That's uh, that's me. Uh, I picked Young Su because of where he ended. Is that mm. I think the the balance between force and care is present in the Avatars, um, perhaps more so in Korra and Kyoshi, um, in that they have this power, they can beat shit up, but they also care about things and is figuring out how to wield their power in a way that isn't just being a hammer right and yeah, yeah. yong su ending with care his heart heart first whether or not he would be the most quote unquote like competent businessman like get shit done kind of thing um it, i still think that he would do good yeah yeah and would and would try to yeah do good. would yeah. try to do good That's... and like yeah i like yeah. that Ergwin says, I'm going to be a spirit bender and KO Ko in my I imagination. considered writing Ko, but then I thought maybe killing him would make things worse. Yeah. Maybe there's this balance kill us in here? the spirit world really that we don't know about. Yeah, yeah exactly. 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 And then don't kill Lava for yeah, kill whatever. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> well, it looks like we've got some admin to take care of. Uh, we regret to inform you that the next two weeks we are not streaming on Sunday. We're going on a bit oh, of a hiatus. Hi. Why are we going on a hiatus? Well, uh, next week, some of us aren't even going to be in the city. I think any of us are going to be. Yeah, I think we're going to be out of town too. Yeah, you're right. Yep. So we're just yeah. not around. Following week, uh, <laughs> Canadian Netrunner Nationals. Look, uh, <laughs> it's important to represent. Okay, thanks. <laughs> But also, we will be preparing for our new campaign. I sort of doubt that this is a surprise. Uh, having gone through the book, having figured out what uh, whether we like this or not, we are at this point announcing that this is our intended next campaign. Um, we are going to have a good, nice good talk amongst all of us to figure out what uh, how we're going to proceed with this uh, exact episode. scheduling is uh, TVD but the idea is likely that we will go on hiatus for two weeks and then it will be at least one more stream before we start playing werewolf whether we're playing a one shot or whether we're going to show some of what we've already determined for werewolf uh, remains to be seen um, we're not planning on starting it too too late uh, yeah. So our next stream, our next Sunday stream, will be September third. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and we are intending to start the campaign, our werewolf campaign, in September. Yeah. You, likely early September, but um, there's, you know, character and story development and prologue in Session Zero and mm -hmm. all of that for us to get through. Um, so we can't be more specific on the start date at this time. Well, Aragorn's been holding this one for a long time, hey? A pocket twitch. A pocket twitch. <laughs> Aragorn's been like, I'm going to go. Thank you, Aragorn. We Yay. are, so we are planning on starting it soon, uh, but it won't be for a little bit just because of the break that we're going to be taking and us wanting to make sure that we're uh, letting ourselves uh, do this properly. Of course, one thing that I will point out is that we want to hear what you think, but we need something from you. Oh, we need your DNA. No. Oh, God. Uh, we're going to make everyone DNA. sample packs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're going to make, yeah. We are, we're starting this. We're not saying start this right away. But one thing that we are going to say is that this is, because this game has just recently been released, this is an opportunity for us to find more people who could potentially join our community and enjoy the games that we stream. Uh, we kind of need to continually bring in new people because people will fall out of things, right? We don't, this, this is way more fun if we have an active chat going for everybody, for us, for you. Survey responses specifically mentioned that it's nice to have other people to discuss with live, mm -hmm. so. Make sure that happens, yeah. please. And the best way for us to do that is to ask you to tell other people about us. Mm -hmm. um, there are so many people who have their own Let's Plays or actual plays out there, which is great. We're not saying anything bad about anybody else. But uh, one thing that I know personally is that I'm way more likely to listen to a recommendation from a viewer than I am from a content creator themselves. Because... We, I, I know that I'm not going to speak for the other three, but I am not good at uh, <laughs> self promotion. No, mm. I, I hate it. I, I, I'm not good at it, but I also don't think that it's as valuable. Mm. Uh, being able to tell other people, hey, this is what I choose to listen to and I think they're worthwhile is a lot better. And we could really use your help for that, if, if at all possible. Yeah what form that can take of course we leave up to the wisdom mm -hmm. the wisdom glory and anyway the yeah. renown of the viewer uh yeah we, but like how you how you uh want to and in what way you would like to share us with other people i mean it's down to you and and we would really appreciate any and all support in that vein be really cool we're not asking for this for tomorrow oh also yeah. no, we please. are on hiatus for a little bit mm -hmm. but yeah. start thinking about it if you could start brainstorming ways that we might be able to reach out to other people uh, i think it would help and we are going to do at least one more clinic hours for instance on werewolf because we've done we did our preview before the book came out we did our first impressions uh which are both available on our youtube channel we'll probably do a third one so that's something that um that's a that's a start but uh the concept is if we want to make sure that we've got like a nice cool chat going where everybody is participating and theory crafting and tinfoil hatting and all of that um then shipping shipping, shipping. then it, it takes some people <laughs> to to be in there we do have some ideas of how we're going to proceed with tech uh with little tweaks that we've got changes we've we have an idea of a new thing that we might do at the end of games Oh, oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is like stream. Oh, 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 yeah, good. <laughs> but uh, that's that's the thing that we're, we'd like to look out for. Final thoughts on Avatar. Uh, I loved this campaign. Mm -hmm. I had a ton of fun with this campaign, um, and I think it's an example of that we had a lot of fun despite the system, as opposed to because of the system. But and a lot of elements of the system did lend mm -hmm. itself to fun. Yes. Like we are taking a lot of positives out of these yeah. mechanics. Oh yeah, well. sure. Like the huge thing of you can be a character that feels exactly like they belong in the TV show or the comic swords books. Like it feels right and that bending and weapons are equal. Like there, there are a lot of good things. We just didn't deal with some of the crutch. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 I just mean like we, we 
I'm not saying the system is a total failure. Oh, I, just mean, like, I think that we enjoyed this game not because like the system was the one that was the best for mm -hmm. us. Um, but uh, a big part of that is you. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much for tuning in. We we super yeah. appreciate it. Yeah. We mm -hmm. really look forward to doing Werewolf Fifth with you and sharing our thoughts on that. We're probably going to go discuss some of that now mm -hmm. uh, yes. on our way oh, out. That's a good core. But uh, again, the fact that you showed up for our Froyo, uh, super super happy about that. Um, we love seeing that. All of your fantastic questions. Mm -hmm. Are we comfortable with confirming that what Crosshair said about, I don't know if someone Times? already did. Yeah, nope. Crosshair wanted to see yet. if it was same time. Yes, this but time. I would say that's a yes. Yeah, no. yeah. Yeah, we're going to hold on to this time slot for now. It seems to be doing um, well for a lot of people, even though I still feel weird at the end of Sundays being like, what do what you mean? Well, now I, I go to sleep, bed? right? No. Well, as you can see, we have there's a threat here. We better think of some fun characters. Or else is what's implied. Yeah, the or else was there. implied exactly. <laughs> right. And I mean, this is this is his his system. So the or else means that he'll come out of the book and attack us, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes. slash our throats. <laughs> like a werewolf. Would. Yeah, exactly. Keep an eye. It's sort of the reverse. No, never mind. No, I'll get into it later. Any other final thoughts from the three of you? Thank you for this game. Yes. Thank you for the wonderful game. Ah, yes. Back at me. <laughs> she did the thing. She did the thing. You learned to do the thing. Okay. I did. I Yay. did. I did. Literally. Okay. <laughs> Yay. Uh. Thank you. Thank you. Can I say I? You're probably about to get to this, so I'm yeah. sorry if I'm preempting you. <laughs> Just because RPG Clinic is going on hiatus for a couple weeks doesn't mean that there won't be other streams. I, we can go through them all, but sure, fire I, away. I, I, we will. I will also, of course, the disclaimer is the Discord is the place to check it out. I've had to cancel all my streams last week. So, you know, which basically just means I'd love to get back to it. Tuesday, you can expect a stream from me in the late afternoon, early evening on Tuesday. Hopefully the usual time. Definitely the usual channel. Come and join us. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for me. Busy week. It's, it's a very busy week for me. A good stream. Uh, Friday, there will be something. Maybe not with me, because I booked a gig and they haven't told me what time it is. Yeah. Yay. 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 So either way, Scott will be present. Yay. So what? We won't be streaming this Sunday, uh, Saturday. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes to Drew Crew. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yes to Drew Crew. <laughs> that is happening. And yes, probably to the end of the Emperor's Dilemma, it will be solved, probably with swords. <laughs> probably. We oh, will cool. see you folks if you aren't in the various streams throughout this coming week and the one after. We will see you September 3rd, 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Hope you have a good week. Yay! Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time. Hey! Bye! Bye. I never got a chance to use this. Is this Brave Little Soldier War? Yeah, it leaves Oh, for God's <laughs> sake, man! Why would you do this? Well, because, you know, I could. Um, but nobody, like, important died, so... I thought our innocence died. Jesus um, I like how it's our innocence, like... Yeah, no, 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 John's innocence was gone. <laughs> Alright, is this, is this the longest we've gone between, like, saying goodbye and then pushing the button? Easily. Okay. <laughs>